NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Perfect for race fans. Sonic. This is how we Sonic. Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And by Die Hard Batteries. Now available at Advance Auto Parts. I took a field trip there in third grade, and we sat in the Tower Terrace bleachers, ate our sack lunch, and I got to see some racing grades like Mario Andretti, Johnny Rutherford, Rick Mears, and I was hooked. When they offered me the job to start working here, I thought, now I can finally be a part of a family and be a part of something bigger than I can ever imagine. It's a place where imagination can run rampant, that you could be a driver, that you could win this, you could put yourself in their shoes. It is our heart, it is our soul, it is what we do. We are very proud of our racing heritage and we're very proud of our racing history. If you would come here one time, you would be overwhelmed with what goes on, the energy. Be prepared for an attack on your senses because this place covers them all. The storylines, the history, and this is a unique place where you can see something happen that you might not see happen anywhere else. The action on track is like none other, and to be able to see cars cross those yard of bricks is something you won't forget. People know that drivers want to win at this track, and it means something to them. Drivers want that badge of honor to say that I went to Indianapolis and I won. We all work together for the one common goal of putting on the greatest spectacle in racing. It is just something special about the 4th of July, and I think that there's no better place to celebrate those feelings than here at this track. So much of what is NASCAR spirit is to be able to say, I can drive faster, I can push the car harder, I can do more, and I can win this race. And I think it's a perfect fit for the 4th of July. I love this place, and I love what it means to other people, and I love to see the legend live on. And to me, this place will always live on. It's the big machine, hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard. This telecast presented by Advance Auto Parts. All right, let's take a look at today's starting grid brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Joey Logano, Middletown, Connecticut. Kurt Busch, Las Vegas, Nevada. Alex Bowman, Tucson, Arizona. 48 of Jimmy Johnson was still supposed to start in this fourth position outside of row two, but now it is Justin Algar substituting for Jimmy Johnson, who just tested positive for COVID-19. Eric Almirola, Tampa, Florida. Danny Hamlin, Chesterfield, Virginia. Kyle Busch, two-time Brickyard 400 winner. Martin Truex Jr., Mayetta, New Jersey. Brad Keselowski, 2018 Brickyard 400 winner. And we want to dial up Joey Logano on the radio before the green flag flies. Junior, can you get him up there? Hey, Joey Logano, Dale Jr. here in the booth, bud. Got it. All right. Oh, he's right in front of him. He's sideways. So, uh, so starting uh, on that front row, front row. Um, um, how do you choose which line to be in? And tell us why you make that decision. <laughs> uh, I rewatched a lot of stuff to see which lane to win most often and uh, maybe take my chances on that. Uh, probably also just trying to decide on the pushes you have behind you. Yeah, you have a, I know the start finish line's a little bit towards turn one, but you still have a decent uh, section before you get to turn one uh, where cars should be pushing uh, to get ahead of you there. So uh, timing to restart, even as the leader is big, and uh, hopefully uh, can get a good push and uh, get us through. So I'm uh, going to take the top. Hopefully that works. All right, you're one of the most aggressive guys on the racetrack when it comes to defending your position. Do you think you're going to have to do a lot of that today? Why change now? <laughs> I keep doing what uh, has, has made us successful here with the Shell Pencil Mustang and uh, racing aggressively. Uh, Fighting hard for the track position today is going to be big, along with uh, Paul Wolf up on the box uh, making the calls is going to be key. So it'll be an interesting one. All right, Joey, thanks for your time today, bud, and good luck. All right, thanks, man. Have a good one. So Chase Elliott actually starts 10th, and we want to show you the rest of the lineup here. Harvick and Blaney back there in row six. Yeah, Reddick, a rookie of the year. 
in row seventh, Battle of Rookie of the Year. And how about Matt Kenseth back in row 11? I'm not sure at the beginning of this year, he definitely didn't think he'd be in a race car and for sure didn't think he'd be in the Brickyard 400. And Steve, the way they got these starting positions was random draw, correct? Random draw by groups. Basically, the top 12 in owner's points gets to start somewhere 1 through 12 off draw, then a middle group of 12, and then the back and so on. So no one has seen the track yet for laps. This first lap under green will be the first lap at speed all weekend. All right, let's take a look at the race breakdown, Steve. And this is another one where strategy is going to come into play. Strategy will be huge, but it's the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, that iconic rectangle, two and a half miles, nine degrees, a relatively flat racetrack, nine degrees in the corners, but don't let the flatness take away from the speed. These cars are going to reach 194 miles an hour on each of the long front and back straightaways, short shoots at each end of the racetrack. And this race is always gets broken down. It's 160 laps. We're going to have stage one for 50 laps, two for 50 laps, and then a final stage of 60 laps. We expect fuel to be 38 to 40 laps. And you see the sun shining down on this racetrack. Our aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. So we thank them for these great shots that we'll be able to see. They're bringing the cars onto pit road. That's so that they can check pit road speed to make sure that they know what pit road speed and what the tachometer says, Steve. Yeah, this is kind of the new system. This is something that normally would be done during practice. NASCAR giving the teams an opportunity to check all their settings, get a good idea where your pit is. You see all the pit signs, the pit crew members out there waving them. Look how narrow this pit road is. It's going to be a big point of conversation today, guys. Very narrow pit road. We got some onboards today for you guys. Uh, Bubba Wallace, number 43, third last year in this race. And he'd love to come out of here with a second or even maybe a first. Worldwide Technology bringing that roof cam to you. He's got a side panner as well. Kevin Harvick, Bush Light camera. He's the defending champion of this race. Kyle Busch, uh, the 18 car, trying to get his first win in 2020. The Toyota roof cam. He's also got a side panner on this car. And then the man with the best view of all, Joey Legato. And this Coca-Cola cam on top of the car. Great, great shots today. All right, we heard from Marty and Kelly just moments ago. Let's hear from them again before these guys get the green flag. Hey, Rick, Justin Allgaier is making his first cup start since August 2016 when he subbed for an ailing Michael Annette. The plan has been in place for him to be the reserve driver since returning from the pandemic break. So they've had everything they needed on hand to get him comfortable in this car, and that includes changing the seat insert, the headrest, the steering column, the shifter, the mirrors, the steering wheel, just for the short list. Crew Chief Cliff, Cliff Daniels told me, aside from that, the execution of this race, they don't plan to do it any differently than if Jimmy had been behind the wheel, although they might be more inclined to go for stage points versus the overall win to help maintain their 12th place standing in the owner's points, Marty. Kelly, since the return at Darlington, Kevin Harvick has delivered three wins. I asked him why it's worked so well. He said, we trust our notes. We're a veteran team, and we trust our playbook. They can lean back on last year's playbook, Rick, because they are the defending winners of this race. And would love to go back to back as we look back on the eyes of Kevin Harvick. Lights are off on the pace truck. That means he's going to be making a very hard left-hand turn here at the entrance to Pitt Road, leaving the field in the hands of Joey Logano in the 22. Kurt Busch in the one on the inside as they get ready for the start of the Brickyard 400 from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. First time at speed going into turn number one here at Indy. They stay side by side for the lead. Logano inching ahead of Kurt Busch as they go down the back stretch. Looking at that outside line, work for Joey Logano. Use that momentum. Look at Brad Keselowski. Big aggressive move down the back straightaway. Short shoot into turn four. They're still side by side fighting for position. Keselowski in the two on the inside. And ten of Eric Almarola. See them side by side. That's going to be a big advantage that car behind them. Yeah, Busher got a run there. Brad did a great job of blocking, taking that run away from Busher. 
Brad takes the spot away from Almarola. And so Keslowski moves up into the ninth spot. You can see how the field's already single filed out. Restarts, really the first three quarters of that first lap after a restart are going to be the best opportunity to get passes made. Looking back from Bubba Wallace is number 43. To be a little balance between how aggressive you want to be, Rick. A perfectly clean Indianapolis. No laps run on the oval all week long. That can be very high for tire wear. There'll be a competition yellow at lap 12 to allow crew chiefs to come down pit road and change those tires. The drivers will have to you know, decide how tough they want to push that right front early. See the 42, Matt Kenza looking to the inside of Chris Busher in the 17. Marty. I was going to ask Steve that question, Rick, about that right front tire. All the crew chiefs I talked to this morning, Steve, 12 laps in, that's enough to make you a little bit worried about that right front. Traditionally, Indianapolis, when it's a green racetrack, very hard on those Goodyear tires. So, Steve, if you were crew chief in this race, would lap 12 be early enough for you for that cop caution? Well, it would have to be early enough. We see the 20 of Eric Jones pull out a line to make a move. In the end, it's up to the driver. I believe you know that right front is going to be unconcerned. Maybe start with a little bit more air pressure, try to help it. What Marty meant by a green racetrack is a track with no rubber. It's hard to tell, but this surface actually has little tiny grooves in it. And to tell that rubber gets put into the grooves, it wears the tires. You see the 47 high off the corner gets passed by his teammate in the 37. And he's struggling. Stenhouse in that 47 car struggling, trying to get grip up here up front. We've got a battle. Fifth place. Chase Elliott passing Martin Trix Jr. And early on, we're going to see this, right? I mean, these guys, they're going off of what engineers think is the best setup for these cars. They haven't had any track time. Well, and even if they're right now, Rick, this track, as Marty was just talking about, no rubber being that, it's going to change dramatically. So if your balance is good here, you better start making adjustments as you see Kevin Harvick out of the groove. William Bryer in that red and blue, 24 tries to keep the four out of the primary lane. Some contact, contact here. Yeah, 18 car. Kyle Busch getting in the door of the 12, Blaney. Brad's trying to figure out who to help. And that nine car's ran down his teammate Bowman. As Blaney goes by Truex for sixth place, Truex fading. Let's take a look. Last week, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Busch, you saw Blaney drive right into the rear quarter panel of Kyle Busch. Maybe that was a little, uh, oh, by the way, guess where I am right now on the track? Because that was on the straightaway that we just saw the 18 go over and just nudge the 12. They're definitely going to remind each other of it for sure. Kyle Busch very unhappy in his interview. We see the 19 of Mark Trex Jr. being attacked there by the 18 of Kyle Busch. Let's listen into the 19. Everything looks good. It just feels like a dog. It sounded like to us. Just keep this program posted. Yeah, it's a dog. I'm wide open. He's, He's got talking. something with the power there. Yeah, talking about the engine, it doesn't sound right. That was his crew chief, James Small who radioed back and said, just keep us up to date. But he says he's wide open, Marty. And they're going by him left and right. Oh, man, that must be frustrating behind the wheel, Jeff and Jr. I can't imagine what Martin Truex Jr. is feeling, losing multiple spots on every straightaway. You heard him say it's just laying over like a dog. They're going to check and see if it's a plug wire that might have come off. But again, these are one of the things that would have been found in practice for the 19 team. Martin Truex Jr. going backwards, clearly an engine issue. They'll see if it's something they can fix at the cop caution. Good news is you know you have a caution in six more laps. The bad news, trying to diagnose this will be very difficult on pit road during the race, Rick. In six laps, a long time already. Out front, Joey Logano ahead of Kurt Busch.
NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Die Hard Batteries, now available at Advanced Auto Parts. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR, perfect for race fans. Big Machine Hand Sanitizer. Bottles and refills available at BigMachineHandSanitizer.com. And by Toyota. Marty, what are we hearing down there? Boy, Rick, the show to watch is Martin Truex Jr. going backwards. Started six right now in 28th and maybe going to lose that spot. Uh, another spot to Ricky Stenhouse Jr. But they might be able to diagnose what's going on. Listen to the radio. All right, Steve, so ECU error. So if you're James Small, the crew chief for Martin Truex Jr., does that at least give you somewhere to go to start diagnosing it before he comes down pit road in two laps? Well, as the crew chief, it's going to tell me what to tell the to, uh, engine guy from TRD because I'm not sure I know what that error is. But ECU is the electronic control unit for the engine. There's a digital readout on the dash. Martin Truex Jr. just relaying that information. Unlike in other series, they can't see that on the pit box. The only way they're going to know in the pit box is what Martin Truex Jr. is telling them. But James Small, I'm sure, is in communications with TRD, with the engine uh, producer for this vehicle, and say, hey, this is what we're seeing, this is what we're hearing, and create the list of two dudes when they come down pit road under yellow. And Steve, that's exactly why NASCAR has put these competition cautions in place with no practices. So if you have some kind of a problem, if you've missed something really big with your setup, your whole day is not ruined. It's exactly why these things are there. He has fallen already from eighth down to the 29th position, though, for Martin Shrex Jr. As we see Chase Elliott in that Napa number nine, taking a peek at the 88 of Alex Bowman. Yeah, he's just trying to look to the left, saying, hey, man, I'd like to get by you. I think I'm a lot faster than you. But the nine car is kind of stuck behind this 88. It's allowed Blaney and the 12 to close in on this battle. And if I'm Alex Bowman in the 88, I say, I know you're faster, buddy, but we got a caution coming. So I'm not going to give you the spot. I'd like to keep this spot before we come to pit road. We would expect that caution to be coming we'll out see very shortly because it was supposed to be on lap 12. Currently on lap 13, and Harvick is on pit road now. Yeah, so this might be a strategy call to pit before the yellow, but I don't believe they could take fuel. They must think they can either all go all 50 laps or maybe as an issue. We'll have caution to see is out now, Steve. Yeah. Was that a good call to come to pit road right now? I don't understand it because like, they can't take fuel, so they're going to put tires on this car. There's no doubt. Four yeah, how about this call, Steve? Yeah, they're going to go with four Goodyear tires here. I did not hear an issue at all with Kevin Harvick. We'll follow up with Rodney Childers. But again, to your point, they cannot take fuel here. Everyone else can. And remember, they won this race last year. Junior called it in the pre-race show by having short run speed and keeping track position. That's how critical it is. You'll take some crazy chances. Rodney Childers coming before the comp caution. So, Rick, I, I, you know, I'm always a guy for gambling. You hear Kevin Harvick instantly shut the engine off. Maybe they feel they could go 50 laps on fuel if he saves enough. That's way outside of the window I would have thought. I could think they could only go 40. Steve, the rule is, though, that they can't take fuel before the caution is thrown for that competition caution. For this specific reason. Yes. The, the idea of a competition yellow, as Jeff said, is for teams to assess where they're at, to make adjustments, to perhaps, you know, overcome a mechanical issue. This is Kevin Harvick. I, I was thinking trying to get track position. We're going to have to see how this plays out. Yeah, I, I, it may be a reaction from crew chief Rodney Childers, who's really frustrated with the draw that they've been getting for their starting position, knowing that they got a race winning car, but getting such a poor draw. This gets them that track position if this works out. Yeah. Could he come in here and just do fuel, Steve? I mean, he's still going to still lose spots, right? I, yeah, I mean, I, yes. Yes, he could come down to take fuel, but he was running ninth. And I don't see he could come on pit road last, take fuel only, and then reblend in ninth. So I don't think this is going to be a net loss. Pit road is closed uh, when the caution comes out initially. So pit road still closed. We take a look at the pit road at Indianapolis and, and very narrow, right guys? Yeah, the reason we want to pull this up is because all these cars are going to come on pit road at the same time. This is the most narrow pit road that there is on the, on the, on the circuit. We see a lot of issues on pit road, a lot of damage, a lot of cars running into each other, especially early in the race. If all these cars are lead lap, it gets very, very dangerous. See the field coming out of turn four now, again, led by Joey Logano in the 22. Pit road still closed, so that's why they're not ducking onto pit road now.
So Dwayne Johnson brings Super Bowl champion Victor Cruz and Ninja Warrior Jesse Graff to take on all comers to become the next Titan champion. That's the Titan Games Monday on NBC. I'm guessing Justin Allgaier would like to be a Titan. A little bit of a Titan today subbing for Jimmy Johnson. Let's listen into the radio of 4018. I took too long to pass a couple of those guys just being timid, uh, not, not knowing the car yet. And once I got clear of them, I felt like I was okay. I know we still need some speed, but uh, I just felt like I needed to get a little more comfortable there. Yeah, no sweat at all, man, whatsoever. You did fine. That's pretty smart of Justin yeah. Allgaier. Steve, what is the what is the feeling as a crew chief in this situation? You, you know, there's you're not racing for points. What do you expect out of the driver in this situation? Well, I think the most important thing is you want to put a good show on for your fans, for your sponsor and ally, and for Justin Allgaier. You know, he is his resume. While I don't think he's auditioning for a cup ride, you want to give him the best platform to go out there and do a good job, more for anything for pride and for Jimmy Johnson. Remember, Jimmy's at home watching this, probably feeling awful he's not there for his team. We all understand why. It's not his fault. But you want to go run well to take the pressure off your driver. You want him to think, you know what? I hate you're not here, buddy, but we're, we're doing the best we can without you. Let's get an update on the four team, Marty. Hey, Rick, checked in with uh, Rodney Childers and Kevin Harvick riding on board. He's uh, under power right now, but trying to save as much fuel as he can. Rodney told me, plan from the very beginning of the day to come on that lap, take four fresh Goodyear tires, and see they will not pit here on the comp caution to take fuel. So tell you what, that just shows you how important track position is. Rodney Childers willing to roll the gamble early in the race here to get all the track position he can. Bit road's open, so they're getting ready to come at you, Kelly and Marty. And you'll see the leader there, Joey Logano, in that yellow 22 car. He's going to come to pit road. He said he fired off. He was just a little bit tight, especially in one and two. But late into that run, he said the car fell off big time. He said he was in a four-wheel drift there. Oh, the huge the wreck. So hey, road. We talked about how narrow it was. And look at this. They're piled up at the end of pit road. Piled up. There's like six cars. You can't even get by. Huge damage to the 48, 37 we see in there. Unbelievable. The others were, that were up front, not affected. If the one has an issue on his pit stop, it is chaos on pit road. And look at this. The chaos back here. Corey LaJoy in the 32, he's in it. The 19, Martin Trucks Jr., because of the issues he had on the track, he's involved in this as well. They pile up at the entrance to pit road.
As we were going to break, you saw one of the crew members from the 12 team get pinched in between the 12 and another car. You see the AMR safety team is right there on pit road attending to him. Steve, th this is one of the reasons why all the crew members had to have helmets when they went over the wall. Uh, uh, safety, a big issue. Yeah, years ago, pit crew didn't have to wear fireproof suits. That changed. Then it was helmets after an accident in Miami. Uh, over a decade ago once again you see just how dangerous pit road can be this is every crew chief's fear these pit crew members become like family you ask them to go out and do their job and so often we talk about the competition side how fast you can do their job but jeff did a nice job of highlighting how narrow the pit road here is here in indianapolis and it doesn't matter the speed of these cars they're 3500 pounds a 3500 pound vehicle when they start sliding around these crew members all very brave men and women who jump over pit wall week in and week out. So they're going to they're attending to one of the crew members from the 12 team. Well, that's really scary, obviously. Here's this, they start coming on pit road and they just all got stacked up right there. One of them, one car, one driver had to slow up because of a guy turning into his pits and then they just all stacked up. And this is the narrowest pit road on the series. Yeah, 24 feet. And you know, cars on the on their in their pit boxes taking up a majority of that, or some of that. And when a car does get slowed down, on you know, it's a chain reaction, a domino effect that starts way up here. And then look at the cars; there's nowhere for these guys to go because of how narrow that pit road is, and affected so many cars. We also saw a tire got hit there. Those things are 70 pounds that just got thrown in the air there. Great to see a smile on his face. So a thumbs up and a smile. Again, that crew member for the 12 team. Those guys are warriors go over the pit wall. What kind of man? Think about the nerve of that guy smiling after that. Wow. We're going to show you another look, uh, but again, Steve mentioned 3,500 pound car. Oh. Mm. Pinched between two of them. And the amazing thing is he, he crawled out of there and was getting out of the way. The helmet had come off, but uh, yeah, these guys really extremely brave. That was another reason also for pit road speed. They, they brought a pit road speed so that these cars weren't coming in at race speed, trying to get as fast to their pits as they could. But again, things like this could happen because of this narrow pit road. It looked like there was a driver who was looking for his stall or trying to get slowed down to turn into his stall. And as he slows down, the chain reaction, as you two have pointed out, Jeff and Dale, you know, once they kind of start banging in there, not only is it narrow, but it's not narrow to grass at a different track like perhaps Charlotte or other places where you could spin out into the grass because of, you know, the proximity to the front stretch, the wall is required, so there's nowhere even for the spinning cars to go. They stay collected on pit road. It's the second year in a row. Martin Truex Jr. has had problems on pit road early in the race. There is a red flag out right now, so you're going you're to see teams looking at cars. They can't work on a car in a red flag condition, so that's why the cars are parked on the back stretch, but they're also stopped on pit road and teams cannot work on a car on pit road under a red flag. So this was last year. See Martin Truex Jr. back at the back of the screen, same thing. They all stacked up and he just, you know, there's nothing he could do. You know, as a driver, you're taught to be as close to the guy in front of you as you possibly can while you're coming down pit road. If you're four feet behind, that's, the same as making a slower stop, right? You have to be stacked up to the guy in front of you to maximize your, your amount of time that you're on pit road. Marty. And Jeff, this place has just never been kind to Martin Truex Jr. as he was coming into a stall. He told his crew chief, Martin Truex Jr., to James Small, he said, I'm sorry, this is just a disaster of a day. Remember, they started the race, they had the engine issue, then they got caught in the wreck on pit road. As you mentioned, Jeff, second year in a row for the 19 team. And all they're doing right now is evaluating what they can do. To Rick's point, they can't work on it right now under the red flag. Blake Harris there in the Bass Pro Shops helmet leaning in. He's the car chief. They can do this. They cannot touch the car, though, and do any repairs to the car. So they're kind of evaluating now. And, Steve, you've done this before. Make a plan as best you can. So as soon as that 
yellow flag comes back out, let's get everything done. Well, they have to have two plans now. They have damage and they still have an engine issue. Without that engine issue, you question if they would have ever been far enough back to get into this accident, Rick. It was chaotic on the entrance to Pitt Road for the 19 of Martin Trucks Jr. Under a red flag early at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you're watching the big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard. Telecast presented by Advanced Auto Parts. The reason for the red flag, an accident at the entrance to Pitt Road. And we have confirmation from the 12 team that it was Zach Price, the rear tire changer that was pinched between two cars. And he's being checked out now by the AMR safety crew. So as we take this look right here, that's Michael McDowell. He's slowed down because he's pitting directly in front of the 12. So as he slows down, you can see the stack up behind him, just like on the interstate, right, Jeff? When someone slows down, no one's expecting it. Everybody checks up, and obviously the chain reaction, there's started to be contact and just no room to avoid it. Yeah, and the visibility, keep, it, keep in mind, see right here, this, this is, oh, that's so scary. Ugh. Keep in mind, when you're driving that race, when you're driving a race car, you can't see through the car that's in front of you. So, you know, you don't know what's going on three cars in front of If they get stacked up, it's very difficult for you to see it and get, get slowed down in time, especially single file on pit road. Kelly. And when I talked to Kyle Busch's crew chief, Adam Stevens, and asked him what his biggest concern was going into this race, he actually pointed to pit road. He said that place is so narrow, it's 55 miles per hour. It's a pretty fast pit road. And one other change this year, they have two spotters here because the speedway is so big, but they have changed locations. They no longer have a speed uh, spotter up on the pagoda. Instead, they have their primary spotter down in turn one in the grandstands, another one in turn three. And Adam Stevens says it was going to be difficult for those spotters in turn one to help assist getting those drivers into their pit stalls on pit road. Now, Adam Stevens himself does not participate in the 18 teams pit stops. So that was going to be his job helping. But not every team has that luxury. A lot of these uh, crew chiefs have actually taken on a role during these pit stops. So they're all kind of pulling double duty, making it difficult. But that was basically the exact scenario that had Adam Stevens concerned going into this one. Yeah, Kelly, you have 
basically four less crew members. So the crew chiefs are taking part of the pit stop. Some of them are handing tires in or handing fuel in. The other twist, Rick, is she mentioned Adam Stevens' pit selection. Well, that used to be off qualifying. You fast cars would pick first. Well, now they use last week's results is the order in which they pick pit stalls. Well, remember, the 18 of Kyle Busch was in an accident last week, so he was way down the list picking stalls. You saw right there the pre- and post-pandemic four less crew members. I actually talked to Rodney Childers this morning and said, hey, are you involved in the pit stop? And how about this one? The four car needs two complete full tanks of gas. Rodney Childers has to get down off the pit box and hand a tank of gas over to his gas man so no one is on the pit box during the pit stop. Wow. And they're firing the engines back up. That means that we have gone to a yellow flag condition, so the caution now is out. That means that those teams can go to work on the cars now that were on pit road and analyzing what they needed to do. So under the wheel well of the 48, these guys frantically going to work on the 19, trying to figure out what the engine issue was. Just, you know, a reminder, in years past, you would see body parts come out, taped on, and all these patches. That's gone away. NASCAR's got away with all that with the new crash rules that have been in effect now for a couple of years. You can't add any pieces. You could put all the tape on it you want, and then you have to go out and find minimum speed. If you can't do that, you're going to be removed from the race. There's only a certain amount of time. It's called a crash clock. And if you work on your car too long, you'll be eliminated. That's why they're frantically working on these cars now. They will be on the clock if they were involved in the incident. So pit road is open again. As the car's rolling around, we'll see if others will take to pit road. A few of these cars chose not to come the first time. Wise decision. These guys all would have been behind that stack up. So they'll come to position, come to pit road now and get service. These were cars towards the back of the field when the yellow came out. And you can see who's in front of that 22 car as they stayed on the racetrack, Kevin Harvick. I'm telling you, I, I keep working on my calculator here, trying to figure out Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childress' plan. I understand they've cycled to the front, but without being able to put fuel in this car, I don't see how they can make it to the lap 50 caution. Although, if you listen, <laughs> it's not I don't running. hear an engine running, Rick. <laughs> Saving as much fuel as he can. There, he fired it back up again. He'll catch up to the pace car. We'll be back for the restart after this.
The diehard batteries you know and trust are now at Advance. Unrivaled performance meets unrivaled expertise. Diehard batteries now at Advance Auto Parts. So Rick, 17 laps in. You see the damage from all the cars that get stacked up. Well, this is the one of Kurt Busch. Oh, they drop the jack. He goes to leave. He runs over the air hose. He has to back up. This was our third place runner before the yellow. Comes in third. You see the disappointment, the confusion. Are we changing left side tires? Now he's all the way back at the 28th position. So if you're keeping notes, Rick, you're going to run out of ink because there's a lot of cars involved issues in this first set of pit stops. Yeah, not the way he wanted his 700th start to go. It's been very disjointed to start. Obviously, the lightning uh, backing things up as far as the green flag, and then the issue on the competition caution when the bottleneck happened at the entrance to pit road. You have to wonder if, you know, not having any practice, not having any repetitions or any anything happening, you, you show up, jump in the car, and go to race. you got to imagine we haven't seen a lot of negatives to that in the sport since since we've been doing it that way this year. But that might have played a big role in creating that issue on pit road. The one also had a penalty for an uncontrolled tire. 19, I think, had too many men over pit wall, which is an okay penalty while you're trying to do repair. Hey, guys, take a look at this. 128 degrees right now inside that car. That's Bubba. And... It's warm, obviously. This has been a racetrack where we've seen drivers get out of the car and just almost sit down and fall down of exhaustion. And that's unique because yesterday we had a, a temperature gauge inside of one of the Xfinity cars, and it was roughly 10, maybe 15 degrees cooler than that. It tells you these cars, they have them down to the ground, sealed off on this surface as they go around the oval, whereas the Xfinity cars are a little higher, get a little air underneath the car, and it doesn't trap all that heat. But these, these cup cars... They got them sealed to the ground. It traps a ton of heat in those cars. They cook inside of there. It's going to be a tough day for those drivers. It is a warm one. Marty. Hey, guys, checked in with Rodney Childers, and yes, he does know Steve. He cannot make it to the end of this stage, but this was planned all along. So, Steve, have you done your backwards math, pitting off sequence all day long? Looks like Rodney Childers is willing to do it. And you know the other thing that allows them to do that? Those three win stickers behind Kevin Harvick's name. They have three wins in the bank. They know they're in the playoffs, so hey, why not roll the dice, go for that fourth win? Hey, Rick, I always encourage gambling, especially after winning races, <laughs> yeah. so good for Rodney Chillers and Kevin Harvick. What they need now, though, is have a good restart. They want to stay to the front. They've got that track position. Now they need to keep it. So well, that shows you the confidence they have in their speed, right? He's not worried about right. getting out front, leading the pack, or getting far enough back where if he has to pit on the green, he's going to go a lap down. He's counting on the fact that he will have enough speed, and you can pit here on the green and not go a lap down. Season not going well for Martin Truex Jr. as we see him out of the car. He's done for the day. That's so frustrating. That's just so frustrating. And now the field approaches the Geico restart zone. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano making up row one. Joey chose the inside on the initial start on this first restart. Four car on the outside with a teammate behind him. Contact three wide. Brad Kozlowski to the inside. Puts Bowman three wide in the sandwich. We saw Bowman slide out, make a little contact there. And Logano trying to steal away the lead for Kevin Harvick. Harvick using that outside lane. Carry that momentum down the back straightaway. Logano trying to side draft that quarter panel, pulling back. Here comes help from Amarola. Big push. He's going to try to help his teammate. They stay side by side through three. Harvick down the short shoot has the advantage. He's going to close the door into four. That's Kevin Harvick, racing. wow. <laughs> Early in the race, shows you how important track position is. Those guys going at it. Right along with Joy Logano, this Coca Cola cam. Off the throttle. Trying to keep that left front fender on the inside of Kevin Harvick to get air to it. Make downforce, make the car drive as good as it can. The only thing I'm curious about with the four new tires on Harvick's car but not adding fuel, how will that affect the nose weight in the car and the balance of the car over this short run here? Yeah, you would think it would be tighter without the weight in the back swinging on 
corner entry, the car might be a little tighter. But you know what fixes a tight race car is fresh air on the nose. All that front downforce, as you see the 48, who was in that accident on Pitt Road, looks like a flat left front tire or right front. It's got all kinds of damage. Yeah, yeah, that, get off the track. That's get off Justin the track Allgaier that's behind the wheel, again, filling in for Jimmy Johnson, who now is at home uh, in quarantine because of a COVID-19 positive test. And so not what he wanted to see either. And NASCAR had to look really hard to see if there's any debris on the racetrack. Stop effort, guys, to trying to get it fixed. I appreciate you trying to get it fixed, but that thing is just killed. Go straight to the truck, Justin. To the truck. End of the day for Justin Allgaier in the 48. Back to the lead. Here we see the battle between the two of Brad Kozlowski and the nine of Chase Elliott. It's going to be interesting, Rick. You know, there's a mix. We, we, that was so complicated during that pit sequence with the accident and the strategy of the four. We have a handful of cars toward the front. Logano, Almirola, Kozlowski on two tires, where Chase Elliott's on four fresh tires. We'll see if those newer left side tires help the speed in the nine car. And Steve, you mentioned earlier about the strategy and uh, the particulars of this racetrack. 38 to 40 laps, they can go on fuel. So the only one that we don't believe can make it all the way is going to be Kevin Harvick, who didn't add fuel under that competition caution because he actually came a lap before the caution came out. Yeah, the rest of these drivers, I believe, can make it to the end on fuel. So now it's just about continuing to communicate with your team early in the race as the track changes. What do you need your car to do differently to be better as the race wears on? Just wanted to let you know, Corey LaJoy was involved in that incident uh, at the entrance to Pitt Road. He has been checked and released from the infield care center. See this replay back from that restart. How aggressive it got. Three wide getting into turn one. That's not going to work. They knew it. Alex Bowman wisely rolled out of the throttle. Got himself out of that situation. But lost several spots back to ninth place. And the man on the outside of that, Eric Almarola. Sitting there in third place, hoping to get his fifth top five in a row. One of the hottest drivers in NASCAR right now, Denny Hamlin. And Hamlin currently running in the seventh position all over the back bumper of Matt DiBenedetto in that 21. Saw Denny was able to leave turn two lower than Matty D. Thought that would let him pull up beside him, but just couldn't do it. This racetrack, a little bit of a bobble there. Yeah. The 21. And then he's showing him, look, man, I want this spot. He knows that's going to hurt his corner, but he's hoping that if he keeps showing Matty D that he wants that spot, he'll give it to him. I think he's also trying to affect the balance of the 21 car, putting his car, putting the 11 car as close as he can to the left rear quarter panel. Try to get that 21 up off the bottom of the racetrack and out of the gas. Right behind the 11 of Denny Hamlin, 24 of William Byron. Crew chief Chad Canals on top of the box, former crew chief for Jimmy Johnson. I talked to Chad this morning. Hard to believe he has yet to go to the shop since they loaded the cars for Atlanta in March from the pandemic. Weeks, months ago now, Chad Knauss has not been to the shop, and he said he's learning. You know, he's a, he's a hands-on crew chief. He's learning how to set this 24 car up from afar and how to prepare. He believes that no practice is hurting both him and his driver. So far, so good here today running inside the top 10. This is a great view to talk about this racetrack. You know, all four of these corners look the same, but they are not the same. They drive completely different. Driving into turn one, this, this corner is very, very tight on corner exit. Out of the throttle, go back to the throttle really quickly, and then the car wants to go straight out to the wall right here. It's very tight on corner exit. Then this corner, turn two, it's much tighter than turn four. They look exactly the same. But off of turn two, if your car is loose, you get way looser than you do off the of four, and you get way t tighter if you're tight. Marty. Hey, Jeff, Steve mentioned it a moment ago, Chase Elliott sitting in fifth, Denny Hamlin sitting there in seventh. They are on four fresh Goodyear tires, and right in front of Denny, Matt Benedetto on two. So, Steve, how much are you watching this as a crew chief as Hamlin with those four fresh tires goes for that spot and gets it around Matty D? Well, yeah, I'm trying to learn from everyone else's decisions, and if you're a car that's farther back in traffic, some of your results can be altered just by where you are in the field, Rick. So I've watched guys towards the front to see if four tires really shows. Right now, two tires are holding on 
everyone in the top three or four, but we still have a long ways, 24 laps to go to the end of the stage. Steve, you mentioned earlier when we saw those cars on pit road and they were working on them, they were on the clock. You had mentioned they had to meet a minimum speed. Well, two cars that were involved in the incident, the 15 of Brennan Poole and the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr., they were not able to meet that minimum speed when they went back out on the racetrack. And so NASCAR has told them the day is over. Head back to the garage. Let's listen in on Eric Almarola's radio. How bad Sam is on the left rear quarter? Uh, looks okay to me, best I can tell. Okay, I was just trying to figure out if I'm tight because of the damage or tight because of the two tires. Maybe just a little bit of the wheel band. We don't think it's bad. We think it's the tires that make it tight. Man, cerebral. Eric Amarola trying to dissect, how is my car? Is it tight because of the track, tight because of potential damage? Is it two tires? We talked to Eric this week, and first year working with Mike Bugaravich, been a crew chief swap at Stuart Haas Racing. And Jeff, I thought it was fascinating. You know, Johnny Klausmeyer was the crew chief for Eric Amarola. He said, you know, we were both just very laid back, very calm. We would have a bad day, and we both would care, but it didn't sound that way on the radio. What Mother brought was a little bit of fire and intensity to this tank car. It's working. Dale had just mentioned four top fives in a row. Yeah, these completely different personalities between the driver and the crew chief, and he thinks that really helps them. It's interesting also how, you know, that's a new team together. They don't have many races together, and they can't spend time together. The only time they can spend time together is actually during the races. And I think that's a disadvantage to new teams. It's taken them a while to get going, but they are running their best as of late. Just getting that chemistry built. Just behind them, the battle is heating up for fourth. Right now, Keselowski has it. But Chase Elegant has been closing the gap. And here comes Denny Hamlin once again. Yeah, Brad's on them two tires. Nine car Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin both on four fresh tires, showing that speed. Look at that 11 car, though, get the run on Chase Elliott down the back straightaway and dive in there. Look, trying to get that car up off the bottom. He does, taking the air off the back of the nine car. That's how you get aggressive to try to put yourself in a position to make that pass. And Denny did a great job there. Hamlin takes fifth away from Chase Elliott. No one's been able to take the lead away from Kevin Harvick. He's up front by two seconds over Logano.
just 18 laps to go in the big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard for stage one. This telecast presented by Advanced Auto Parts. We see the 10 coming off of pit road. Marty, what was going on? He had a vibration and it got so bad he uh, radioed Mike Bugaravich, his crew chief, who's down here evaluating the tires right now. He said, I can't stand it. I'm going to come in. They are looking to see what it could have been. There was contact on the left rear, but they're pointing to the left front as if something might have been wrong with that tire. But Eric Almarola, who was running third, and you guys mentioned he coming off four straight top five finishes, has to pit early here. And right now he is gone. What spot is he in, Rick? Falling through the field in 30th right now. Another driver involved in the incident at the back or at the entrance to pit road, but in the back of the field there was the 19 of Martin Shrek Jr. He has been treated and released from the infield care center as well. And Eric's going to have to hustle. He wants to get up there, and, and if there's a caution of any kind, get the wave around. So he's trying to pass as many cars as he can. If not, catch Harvick and pass him, get himself back on the lead lap. He's got in front of Logano. Remember, Harvick's going to have to pit. So if all that were to work out, Harvick pit and just say, say green the whole way, then Eric should end up back in the lead lap. Well, and Harvick has 33 lap tires. Kev, you know, Eric Almoros are fresh. I know track position is important, but both of them in clean air right here. You see the four of Kevin Harvick up there in the distance, a couple cars in front of it, the 10. This is where it's important on top of the pit box to paint the accurate picture. All right, you're in the free pass position, but you need to stay close to that four. Tell your driver how hard he needs to push. Give him that information. You know, you know, I was surprised at the 10. Jeff, you and I were having the conversation. This is a track where you can pit and not lose a lap. But he was two or three seconds behind the leader, but more importantly, he had a 16-second pit stop. You switch that to a 13-second pit stop, and guess what? He's in front of the four. We talk about the small details that change your entire day. They're going to look back and say, oh, it was the loose wheel. Well, Rick, if they get caught a lap down, it wasn't as much loose wheel as it was a slow pit stop with a loose wheel. That got them a lap down to the four car. Hoping for a caution potentially to get that free pass. And just moments ago, Kelly caught up with Martin Truex Jr. Well, first it was engine issues for Martin Truex Jr. And then he got caught up on that incident on pit road. I mean, Martin, how do you sum up a short-lived day like this? Terrible. <laughs> Disappointing, you know. Uh, Really only ran one lap up to speed and then had the engine deal. So um, just disappointed, you know, our auto orders Camry felt amazing. I thought uh, I thought we were going to have a great day and, you know, ran a lap and a half, I guess. Uh, and it was feeling really good. And then the engine laid down. So um, the deal on pit road, you know, I, I mean, that kind of happened to us last year. We uh, I almost aborted. I almost said I'm just going to wait and come around the next lap. But the guys really wanted to get under the hood and assess the engine. and. You know, come to find out it was just a spark plug problem. So we could have easily fixed it and had a really good day, I think. But um, thanks to auto owners and, um, and Toyota and everybody that supports us. We'll, uh, we'll come back strong and hopefully get them next week. That guy right there really does need to get back to running the way he's used to running. Only two top fives this year on pace to only get about five this year, where last year he had 15 top fives. So they're eager to turn things around. Way, way behind right now on what they had done back in 2019 and also hearing the 48 of Justin Allgaier was evaluated and released from the infield care center. Just wanted to pass that along to you, those drivers that are now out of the race. Now right here, this is basically a battle for the lead because Harvey's going to have to come to pit road. Logano in front of Hamlin here. Hamlin, man, his car looks so good. No surprise. It's been a dominant season for him, but how he's able to drive into the corner behind people. We talk about how Aero dependent those cars are and how how much the guy behind is suffering from this big spoiler, but doesn't seem to be bothering that Atlanta car as much today. Yeah, watch Denny Hamlin, watch him turn early. He's gonna turn early here, try to get underneath that 22 car. Joey Logano is not one of those drivers who's gonna miss his mark. He's gonna be on it. The fact that Denny can stay this close <laughs> through the corner is so impressive to me. Because he, he's really at a disadvantage aerodynamically on the nose of that car. This is, this is the end of the racetrack where he's been able to make those passes into turn three. Not close enough to Joey Logano. He's got to get a big run off of two, close that gap into three, and then turn before he can take that air off his spoiler. Keep Joey from getting to the bottom of the racetrack. Back to the gas a little sooner. Gains a little bit there. Kind of holds there. Lose a little bit. Off turn four down the front straightaway. Doesn't look like Joey Logano gets out of the gas very much. 
Yeah, that turn four is probably the freest corner in the, on the racetrack, so that's probably where they're going to be using the throttle the most. But listen to turn one, way off the gas. If you're not handling, that's going to be the corner where it's going to show up the most. Watch the throttle in this end of the corner. See that right there? And remember that. Turn two and turn four, they look exactly the same. When you look at this racetrack, there's no difference in them, right? Well, watch the throttle when we get all the way around the racetrack to turn four, how different it is. There's Amarola going around. Look at this. He doesn't need the free pass. He has a teammate. And what I like about this, I'm not 100% sure if Kevin Harvick's not helping a teammate out. I don't think so. I just think it's the new tires. Eric Amarola's running some of the fastest laps on the entire field with the freshest tires. That tells me that, you know, it's not just track position. You've got to have a good handling race car. Harvick, that last lap ran right under 52 seconds. Yeah, second, third at a 50 64, so that's a whole second slower for Harvick, allowing that pass to happen. Back to the battle here for second place. And the throttle again as they go down the back stretch. You saw the speed. Closing in on 190 miles an hour as he gets here to turn three. All right, so we set it up a little bit ago and we left to show the pass for that Marola. Watch turn four. Watch the throttle. Remember how much he was out of the throttle in two? They able to carry much more throttle in four. It's into the racetrack. They look the same, but I promise you they're not. Oh, we got a car defense. A six of Newman. Big smoking car for Ryan Newman as a lot of damage to the right side of that car and the caution has come out once again. He's running 18th. And we talked about it. He had a vibration and Indiana kid Ryan Newman obviously disappointed with what has happened here the right front tire down don't know if that happened prior to yeah, or right after he hit the wall. Rick, we had a conversation about Ryan Newman this morning. Jeff, you and I, I mean, his, his numbers are unbelievable. Daytona 500 champ, Brickyard 400 champ, Silver Crown champion. I mean, he just has been in the sport for so long, 668 starts. I think sometimes we forget he had that spectacular crash at Daytona to start the year, recovered from that. It's great to see him back in a race car, but not quite like this. He wanted this one to run to the finish. A lot of damage to the right side of the six. Tough day for Roush. Busher already had some troubles today on pit road. Out of the race, 35th. Looks like this might end the day for Newman. Just have to wait and see how much damage the suspension took to that hit to the outside. Well, and Dale, this is one of these tracks that, that as a crew chief, I'm going to have to really be sure this car is okay to go back out. You're going so fast. We're going to take a look at it right here. Oh, looks like a yes. flat right front to me. Well, we talked about it, guys. You know, this racetrack is the, one of the most abrasive racetracks we go to. A lot of times we, we unload race cars here and can't make six or seven laps without putting tires on it. Now you start this race, it just makes you wonder if it didn't wear through the tire. As they work on the six, another driver who was out of this race early, subbing for Jimmy Johnson, Justin Allgaier's with Kelly. Yeah, and surely a, a disappointing return to the Cup Series for Justin Allgaier, who's just been released from the Care Center. And we'll give you a replay, but what was your vantage point, Justin, as you were coming down pit road? It's, um, it kind of always has been in the past here. And, you know, starting at the back, trying to, to you know, go forward, um, you know, obviously, um, yeah, right here. Um, you know, the, the 15 actually got in the back of me. I didn't know if I got the, the gentleman on the 12 or not. Um, it was, you know, once the once the wreck started happening in front of us um, and, and we all got bottled up there, it just, you know, one car after another we're, we're getting run into. And um, just a shame. I hate it for these guys on this Ally 48. Uh, they've done such a great job. They prepared so well uh, for the circumstances. Obviously, our, our hearts and our thoughts are with Jimmy right now and his family. That's the most important piece of all this is getting him back uh, to the racetrack soon. And... I wanted to do well for them today, and it's just disappointing to uh, to be standing here talking to you, unfortunately. But um, we'll go on. You know, I don't know what uh, I don't know what next week looks like yet, but we'll go run the Xfinity Series race and go have a good good shot at it. And uh, yeah, disappointed uh, disappointed way to end the, the Brickyard 400. What did it mean though to be the one to get the call to step in for a seven-time champion? I told Mr. H and and I told uh, Jimmy as well. You know, I just how honored I was to to be this part. 
that they that they would ask me to be in this this role, and um, it means a lot. It means a lot as a driver. It means a lot um, just to everybody involved in my family. And um, hopefully, I get the opportunity again. Justin, thank you, Marty. Kelly, on a day where track position means so much, pit road open here, nine to go in stage one. Joey Logano has been up front with Denny Hamlin and also Kevin Harvick. We'll see what Paul Wolf can call here, but four fresh Goodyear tires. You saw how fast Eric Almarola was once he put those on. For Kevin Harvick, you could see Rodney Childers kind of slumped down when the caution happened. This certainly throws a curveball into their strategy, but the pit crew can come through here and hold that track position. Car was a little bit tight. He had to flip the fuel switch for the auxiliary fuel to kick in coming down pit road and then Denny Hamlin four fresh Goodyear tires for him he said no handling changes for him and a lot of guys taking two there Rick in some track position yeah two tire stop for Ty Dillon won the race off of pit road he made up 10 spots Harvick you see he dropped one spot on that four tire chain we'll be back for the restart and the sprint to the end of stage one NASCAR and Coca-Cola have partnered with the USO to find military and first responders who have gone above and beyond to keep our community safe and healthy during COVID and this time of unrest. Earlier this week, Coca-Cola Racing family driver Austin Dillon caught up with Lieutenant Colonel Tepker, Chief Medical Officer at Pope Army Airfield, who has stepped into action. Hello, Lieutenant Colonel Tepker. What has this pandemic meant to our military? It's forced us to uh, definitely come up with creative ways to achieve the mission. I'm certainly honored to represent an entire team that's taking care of our members regardless of the risk. We really appreciate uh, your service to our country and our communities. On behalf of the NASCAR Salutes Refreshed by Coca-Cola program, I'm excited to tell you that we're going to continue your support of military families in our community and yours with a donation to USO family programs in North Carolina and Indianapolis. Thank you for your support. It's truly appreciated. As Austin said, NASCAR and Coca-Cola are going to partner with the USO to donate to USO family programs in both North Carolina, where Lieutenant Colonel Tepker is stationed, as well as in Indianapolis to help get through these challenging times. 
They brought the 95 of Christopher Bell onto pit road. NASCAR did because of a transponder issue. That's how they're scored. There's a transponder that's at the rear of every car. And there was an issue with the 95 of Christopher Bell, so they brought him to pit road so they could change that out. Rutledge. You know, Rick, we've talked a lot this week about Roger Penske having the dream, showing up here as a kid and what it meant to him. But he wasn't the only young man that showed up at this track with a dream. And one of them happened to be tied to a tow truck. And that was because it was his job. Tony Stewart, before he was a team owner, a three-time cup champion, or even an IRL champion, he was here because he was a young man interested in racing, growing up in Indiana, running go-karts, being into the just lure that was this track for so many Indiana natives. Something that we saw yesterday with Chase Briscoe, why that win was so important to him. But Tony used to sneak in. He would use the tow truck, get a good stand on the back of the rollback. That's how he watched the Indy 500. And any way you cut it, what this track means to so many different men and women is obviously very real in the racing community. But I know Tony Stewart enjoys the views he gets today, but I don't think he's that far from remembering what it looked like from the back of a tow truck, guys. Yeah, inspiring young drivers, as we saw with Chase Briscoe yesterday. The 95's going around. He'll get his position back, I believe. NASCAR, again, had to change the transponder in that 95. So, Jeff, we talked about points. You know, the playoffs are coming. This is about halfway through, a little past halfway through the regular season. So, you see all the guys in yellow that have a win. We'll go down to that red line. Johnson, who we know isn't in the race today, but Dylan and Jones just above it. The 24 of William Byron is currently listed in ninth as the leader. These are all the guys that stayed on the racetrack. I say that because we're only about five or six laps away from the end of stage one, and points are paid for the top 10 cars, Rick. So we have William Byron, Eric Jones, and Austin Dillon all stayed on the racetrack, and their thought has to be points, right? Try to fill that points bucket to try to have a better opportunity to make the playoffs. Look at the last pit. You have, you know, three guys out front that have been on pit road, haven't been on pit road since lap 15. Ty Dillon gambled with right side tires. And again, the schedule uh, a little bit disjointed as well because of what's going on. Next Sunday, it's Kentucky Speedway. That'll be Fox Sports 1. And that one is at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. And then Wednesday, so just three days later, the All-Star Race will be at Bristol. Once again on Fox Sports 1, and that is at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, so under the lights there at Bristol. And Sunday, July 19th, we'll be back on NBCSN at Texas Motor Speedway at 3 p.m. Eastern. And I just want to say what a great job we have seen out of uh, Mike Joy, uh, Jeff Gordon, Larry McReynolds, the whole crew on Fox. Uh, such a, a difficult season that's been. Uh, we, we had a great Kentucky race. They get it this year, uh, but that race last year, how about the battle between the brothers? What a battle between the Bush brothers. The older Bush, Kurt, ends up getting the wind in the line. Rumor was Kyle left him at the airport. I can't confirm <laughs> or deny that rumor, but rumor is he didn't have a flight home after yeah. that one. It has a rare opportunity for Kurt to get one up on Kyle, and Kurt showed a lot of great emotion after that win. And that's the first time that Kurt had beat his brother in a 1-2 battle when they had that finish. A lot of time, it was the first win for a lot of those guys on that team. Kurt took a lot of pride in that. So Latart, I'm thinking that that caution could not have come at a better time oh. for Kevin Harvick. They rolled the dice early, decided, you know what? We need some track position. How are we going to do it? Caution comes out. They're the first car that came, came off pit road first out of everyone that pitted. So I don't know that could have made it happen any better for those guys. Field now going through the Geico restart zone as we get ready to go. Four laps to go in stage one. Nobody gets the advantage. On the jump, William Byron and Jones side by side into one. Moving up, the four of Kevin Harvick. Trying to get by the nine of Chase Elliott. The Dillon brothers right in front of them. So Chase is going to have the 18 come up there and help him get a run by Kevin Harvick. And yeah, no help for Harvick now. Is Chase is going to go by the three of Austin Dillon. Ty Dillon, brother, younger brother of Austin, just in front of him in the 13. Oh, so close. Yeah, Harvick fights back. Now, right now, if they can stay oh. side by side, it'd be an advantage, no. but Elliott lost grip. He wanted a little more. He thought he'd have a little more grip on the outside in turn four. It wasn't there. He's going to side draft his four car down the front straightaway. What a great three illustration. Three wide behind him. 
Look at the run Matt DiBenedetto has in the 21. Harvest cleared Elliott. Chase Elliott trying the crossover almost there in the nine. And they're still side by side, side by side behind them. As Kyle Bush tries to make the pass and will complete it on Matt DiBenedetto. William Byron and Eric Jones. You talked about it, Steve. Those points. This this win right here could be huge to get a stage 18, win. 18 out of the groove there. Opens up the spot for DiBenedetto. He takes it. Here comes the 11 as well. Oh, look ahead. Coming up Chase on two Elliott. laps to go, and look at how important points are. Chase look at the fight here. Pushes that three car Dylan down the front straightaway. Off into turn one. Trying to clear the four of Harvick. That's a big deal for Chase. That could, you know, that could be a race winning move right there. I know it's early, but track position's huge. It you is. Know that. It is. And now the 11 pushing the 21 of DiBenedetto. <laughs> they Matt. go by Ty Dillon. Yeah, and Matt all kinds of out of shape there. Wild racing here coming to the end of the stage. Coming up on the last lap of stage one. Out front, it's still William Byron in front of Eric Jones. Then Austin Dillon has a mirror full of everybody. And look at them fan out as they go down the front stretch. Rick, we're going to talk about track position and how all these crew chiefs are battling for it. The drivers over here in the booth with us are talking about, you know, how one position can matter. William Byron is currently leading and perhaps going to win this stage. He stayed out. He has 30 lap older tires in the field, and he stayed out from the sixth position. So, you know, this just proves if you can get a car out front in that clean air, it improves the handling to the point where that's the whole strategy for the crew chief, to be the guy out front. It's got to come down to who can manage the fuel the best. But a great strategy call for William Byron and Eric Jones gobbling up these points. William Byron. Hey, win. Good call. Win stage number one. Going down. Those two came into this race 15th and 16th in points. That is why they stayed out, trying to get those hit stage points. Second win, second stage win of the year for William Byron. He's still looking for his first Cup Series win. An Xfinity Series champion, and right now, he's up front, win stage one.
That song is How They Remember You by Rascal Flatts. And this is Big Machine, hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard. And this view, this aerial coverage being brought to you by Geico. Kelly. So William Byron picks up the stage win, which was clearly the objective there. Crew chief Chad Canow said, man, I hate we had to do that. It's going to be a battle to get back up front the rest of the day there. William said he's pretty good, just gets a little bit loose as those tire pressures come up. Austin Dillon in that number three car, middle of the screen, said he just doesn't have any straightaway speed, but pretty good and clean there. You see there, they're going to make a track to bar adjustment and four Goodyear tires. For the three, Marty. Chris Gale, the crew chief for Eric Jones, bottom of your screen, debated for a moment about staying out here, running 10 laps and making it to the end of the stage two, but they, end of the day, decided full fresh Goodyear tires, the way to go here and fuel. He said the pace out front, way different than it was back in the pack, Rick. Because so many came before the end of the stage, not very many come here at the end of the stage. NASCAR on NBC is brought to you by Big Machine Hand Sanitizer. Visit BigMachineHandSanitizer.com now and help keep you and your loved ones safe. Big Machine has been doing just that since March when the brand started using its distillery to produce hand sanitizer to support first responders. Earlier this week, Big Machine was joined by 2013 Indy 500 winner Tony Kanaan to donate thousands of bottles of sanitizer to Riley Hospital children in Indianapolis and let's go to the pagoda and check back in with Mike Tirico all right Rick back outside this crossover weekend with IndyCar and NASCAR socially distanced Dale Jarrett still with us James Hinchcliffe from the IndyCar series as well to James in a second stage racing gives you immediate feedback and data <laughs> what are you thinking of what you saw at the end of stage one well you've seen those verified teams on the pandemic uh, what is fact and what is fiction well it was just verified for these crew chiefs that clean air is way more important than new tires so get your driver in the right position towards the end of this race that's going to give you a better chance than anything you can do on pit road the headline from stage one was that bottleneck at the top of pit road 
you live this for Indy 500 week. We talk about it every year. This narrow pit road, it got the NASCAR guys as well again. It's a very tight pit road, especially coming off a track like Pocono. And a lot of times you think you're dry as a driver, your heart rate's going to be highest on the racetrack. Sometimes it's actually higher in pit lane because of all the all the dangers there. There's exposed personnel. I've seen a lot of Indy 500s lost in pit lane. And unfortunately for some of these guys, their Brickyard 400 hose went out in pit lane too. Is it cool for you to be here to watch the NASCAR Cup guys on the on the famed two and a half mile oval? Absolutely love it. Yeah. And if the end of that stage one is anything like the end of the race is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be a good finish. That's good. I was giving Hinch some grief because we're wearing suits. He's wearing a T-shirt. He said, yeah, <laughs> I was a heck of a lot hotter in the car yesterday when exactly. he finished 11th in the Grand Prix. Rick, back to you and the guys in Charlotte. Yeah, I was wondering if he didn't get the dress code, the T-shirt there by the mayor of Hinchtown. Uh, Take a look at the car comparison, Steve. Well, what's made this weekend so great is IndyCar and NASCAR together. Here's kind of a comparison, a little bit more, about 10 million more to run the NASCAR schedule. But don't let that fool you when it comes to speed. The IndyCar, 240 miles per hour to a track like Indianapolis. NASCAR, about 200. Obviously, the IndyCar, much sleeker, only 40 inches off the ground. But I think the biggest difference is right here, the total weight. Over 3,000 pounds for 1,700 pounds for an IndyCar. IndyCar now has that cool new aero screen that Hinch was talking about that kept him warm during the Grand Prix. I think you're actually going to be leaning on the stock car guys to figure out some of that helmet cooling that NASCAR has been used as we see some sort of issue with the 96 of Suarez. I see smoke. Well, they also had a pitting issue. They had somebody come over the wall too early for Daniel Suarez. So uh, it looks like they may still have more issues with that car as he shakes it. His own pit road a little while ago with the hood up. We'll see if he makes his way back onto pit road before the restart. Chase Elliott's leading this race right now, guys. This is the first time he's ever led in Indianapolis. Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick now making up row number one as we get ready to start stage two. And that push. Had to be given Chase Elliott. Letting clear Harvick. Little bobble there out of the floor of Harvick. He catches it. They stay side by side for second. Watch this Benedetto, run. look at this. Watch this run Denny Hamlin gets. Where's he going to go? Top lane. He follows his buddy, Matt Benedetto, and he'll push him into second. Both those guys going to get by Harvick in single file going into turn three. Benedetto, man, all the way up to second place. Put on a great show for the Wood Brothers here today. Yeah, we mentioned earlier the Wood Brothers were invited to the Indy 500 all the way back in 1965 to aid in the victory of the Indy 500. How amazing would it be to come back and win the Brickyard 400 with their own team? And how about that? Benedetto uh, was in a situation where lost his ride last year, at least knowing what was going to happen in 2020. And right away, Paul Menard, who was driving for the Wood Brothers team in the 21, said, I think Matt Benedetto should take over when I retire. He's the guy that should go back behind the wheel of this famed 21. Marty? Hey, Rick, when we were talking to Matty D earlier this week, he said, you know, I've had to change my expectations here in the 21 car. I was getting so frustrated early in the season because I was putting pressure on myself that I had to win. I had to change my expectations to say, you know what, just go to the racetrack, take what the car will give you. Last week at Pocono, we showed we can win. I'll tell you what, Jeff, he's showing right now, running second at the Brickyard, trying to get an historic win for the Wood Brothers. Yeah, I talked to him this week, and he said to me, he feels like he's always racing for his life. You know, he's always racing to see what's going to happen next year. What's his next opportunity? These types of runs only help, obviously. Big events, marquee events, putting your car up front. That's big. And who can forget that battle at Bristol last year? Yeah. He and Denny Hamlin going at it. Denny ended up getting that win. But I think a lot of people were quietly pulling for Matty D that night. And yeah, one of the things I like about him is his car obviously doesn't quite have the pace that Denny Hamlin has, but he doesn't care. He's going to race hard and try to get every position he can and try to go up there and win this race. He wins this race today. That's the 100th Cup victory for the Wood Brothers. He'd love to be the guy to do that. Should we be surprised that the two that are on the rear bumper of Matty D, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, the four of Kevin Harvick, and third and fourth, which respectfully so good last week at Pocono. Each won a race, each finished second in the other. This is such a great view. This kind of shows the patience it takes 
the commitment to get down to that white line. If you miss that white line, you just lose so much time. You guys talk about the vision. Remember, we're all the way up on the roof of the car, and that allows us to see kind of out ahead, down a little bit lower. But you definitely get blocked from your vision of the cars in front of you. Denny once again peeks down below, letting the driver in front of him know, letting Matty D know that he's there and wants to get by. Hoping Matty D will make a mistake, kind of get in his head a little bit. Good run out of the 11 here. What a cool shot. I won't lie, guys. I've been going to the Brickyard for a long time as a crew chief. Walking out on that front stretch is amazing through Gasoline Alley. But as I ride on board, man, I want to take a lap just once, Rick. I just want to <laughs> feel it's such a famous racetrack. Just what? I don't even have to go this fast. Just 100 miles an hour. Just let me go around at one time to experience what it's like to have grandstands on both sides. That tunnel look is so amazing. Right side. 14 of Clint Boyer just in front of the 95. It's Christopher Bell. What an incredible rookie class this year as well. The big three we called them from the Xfinity Series back in 2019 have all graduated up to the Cup Series and all battling very well against each other. And then you throw in John Hunter Nemechek, another one of the rookies that's in the battle as well. Christopher Bell's been coming, coming in with some great runs here lately. And this is impressive to me to see the damage on the nose of that car. You would think that that would be a negative aerodynamically at a, at a track where aer aerodynamics are critical. He's got damage to the right rear quarter panel as well. Hanging in there. And we want to take a look at the Toyota driver update. As we were talking about Christopher Bell in that 95. Currently running in the eighth position was as far back as 38. He started in 35th position, so a little bit of strategy has got him up here toward the front of the pack. Kelly? Yeah, Dale Jr. was referencing that good run that Christopher Bell has been on as of late, with the exception of the last race at Pocono. But Christopher said that that break from the pandemic actually gave the team a chance to step back and kind of evaluate their first handful of races of the season. They got to go over what went right, what went wrong. He said, when we returned to Darlington, it seemed like the team had done such a great job during that break that they had really turned the corner. He feels like they are much better. So actually a benefit to this rookie and this team to kind of figure out how they needed to move forward. And they had the time to do that and opportunity during that break. Right now, Christopher Bell saying it's just a bit tight in turns three and four. Yeah, Kelly, the other thing was having a chance to take a break and kind of orient himself to the length of these races. He said that to me, that was one of the most difficult things and going, leaving the Xfinity Series and going to the Cup Series is adjusting to the length of the races. It is a major change. And then also the added pit stops. You would think that that's a great thing. More opportunities to make your car better, but it's also more opportunities to make your car worse. Understanding what these cars need and when they need them, that's the orientation the rookie has to go through. Four top 10 finishes already this year for Christopher Bell as we go NASCAR nonstop. Kenseth running six. I think that's a story.
It's a big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard. This telecast presented by Advanced Auto Parts. You can catch the action from NASCAR, IMSA, American Flat Track, and more with Track Pass on NBC Sports Gold. Don't miss a green flag live. It's commercial free and on demand. Learn more at NBCSports.com slash Track Pass. Still up front, it is Chase Elliott. Let's get an update from Kelly. Yeah, and Rick just wanted to give you a quick update on that injured crew member from Ryan Blaney's team, Zach Price, the rear tire changer. We just learned that he is awake and alert, but he has been transported to the hospital for further evaluation. I also spoke to Corey LaJoy. Uh, you see the moment of impact there, who has been in the infield care center with Zach. He said he stopped in to check on him, and Zach was able to give him the big thumbs up, so that's good news. But as I said, the team's just told us that he has been transported to a local hospital for further evaluation. It's now Curtis Thompson is the new rear tire changer for the 12 team in place of Bryce. He comes from Port of the Joy's 32 team, and that's actually a Team Penske crew uh, car as well. So they had a backup there ready to go. So Curtis Thompson takes over duties, and we'll wait for further updates. Yeah, thinking about that young man, uh, these athletes, you know, we saw him get hit there, Zach Price. We also saw the Jackman. Did you see him jump up on top of the car? He had it in his peripheral vision, that car coming. Nice recovery by Blaney all the way back up into the 11th position. Yeah, I think looking at the damage, that's actually probably, if you're going to get hit in the door, that's kind of how you want the damage to look. So it looks like it's knocked that number quite in quite a bit. We've seen that be an advantage to guys over the past years. Back up here in second place, the Benedetto still holding up this string of cars. Party, though, we got Matt Kenseth here having a great run today. Yeah, having his best run in the 42 car. And I asked him earlier this week when we talked to him, I said, hey, what do you think about how it's been to be back? And he said, you know what? Kind of bittersweet. I love doing my job. I'm having a lot of fun, but I don't like where the finishes are. But he said, Indianapolis, at times in my career, was my best racetrack. So I have a lot of hope coming there. Kyle Larson's setups have not worked at all for Matt Kenseth. So they've had to kind of reinvent the wheel here, Kelly, for Matt. And he's having a terrific run today. Just ahead of him, Kyle Busch now into the top five. And just a moment ago, Kyle came over the radio and said that he had a vibration. Now, I'll tell you, he didn't have a huge sense of urgency in his voice. And the team hasn't really said much to him in response. Steve, I've heard a couple guys, Clint Boyer a number of times has complained about a vibration. But again, never came to pit road to adjust any issue. Is there, is there anything about this place, this track, that it could be causing these vibrations? One thing I've found in my career is Indianapolis, the facility, the track is actually so smooth that a tire out of balance, a tire wear, maybe a loose wheel that doesn't get worse, can vibrate and stay consistent. These drivers are experts at this, unfortunately. As long as the vibration doesn't increase or get worse, normally they can ride them out, but it's very difficult. We've seen a lot of tire issues at a track like this, so never want a vibration. Yeah, remember this is the reigning Cup Series champion in Kyle Busch right now, and he's winless this season. We talked to his crew chief, uh, Adam Stevens, said, you know what, the performance isn't there. But he said this team normally gets better throughout the weekend. Well, when the weekend starts, when the green flag drops for the race, it's a little difficult to get better right away. So they're missing out on the practice, and it's hurting them. And I don't doubt that he'll go to victory lane. The big concern is the playoff points, 25 a year ago at this point, zero right now. So this lack of performance early, while I think they can recover and make the playoffs, it will hurt as he moves through the playoffs as you see them go by a slower car. The 21 of Matty D has got these four cars kind of stacked up right here. And I think that that's the opportunity for Denny Hamlin and these guys behind Matt. Is this lap traffic? Look at the 18, had a little trouble there, losing the air. Matt Kinsley takes the spot there, Marty. And I tell you, that stack up is what has Denny Hamlin very frustrated. There's 90 to go, but he is frustrated that Chase Elliott is growing smaller in his windshield, and that's what's making him mad as he tries to get the pass around Matty D. There he goes, finally, Rick. But he was getting mad sitting behind Matt Benedetto just saying, Chase Elliott's getting away from us. Yeah, so we know Matt was getting tight, and he's been cl in clean air. As soon as he gets the traffic, he's going to get really, really tight, and that's going to allow Denny to make that pass, which has just happened. As they get around these lap traffic, we see this time and time again at this racetrack, lap traffic can really cost some guys momentum. And we're seeing that 11 
really haul around the racetrack here. We want to take a look at today's Xfinity fastest laps. It's no surprise then that Denny Hamlin has the fastest lap of the race, over 181.532 miles per hour. That was on lap 27. Remember, that's the average as he's going around this two and a half mile racetrack. Look and at the gap he's put on Matt since he passed him. Look at that. That's in one lap that he's already pulled away from him. And so now Denny Hamlin doesn't have DiBenedetto in front of him. And so let's see if he can reel in Chase Elliott, who has a four and a half second lead as we go NASCAR nonstop. You saw it all on nonstop. Eric Jones hard into the wall. We heard him on the radio just moments ago uh, responding to his crew. He said, I'm all right, but you could tell he was trying to catch his breath. Flames rolling out from the right front of that car. Let's take a look at the replay. Oh, boy. Oh, Such wow. a nasty, nasty angle into turn three. One of the fastest parts of the racetrack for these guys. And, you know, it's just, there's no practice. It's a green racetrack. It's incredibly abrasive. We've seen this track just destroy tires throughout a tire test. These tires, even this far into the race, are still not able to go through an entire run. Steve, you talked about it, how this track has grooves in it, and it's like a cheese grater to these tires and takes quite a while for this place to work in. There's been no laps on it. Drivers, how scary is that when you see the flames rolling out from under the hood and you're strapped in? Uh, my biggest concern isn't the fire, it's, it's that impact. That impact is such a hard, uh, difficult angle going so fast. You see Eric's out of the car. He's taking a look at the right side. Oh, my gosh. That is such a big impact. We're so thankful for all the safety innovation over the last couple of decades. When you see a crash like that, that's as bad as it's going to get for these guys. And he's right. out walking around. Pretty yeah. awesome. We're going to listen in. This is the radio the communication from the team in the 20 car right after that accident happened. All right. Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Careful, man. Careful. We're all right, Fun? Yeah. Catch your breath. Yeah, catch your breath. You know, that's, you know, we're glad to see him walk out of there, but there's playoff implications to this as well. You know, he's right there on that bubble, and now he's not going to be able to earn any more points the rest of the day. It just seems like this team 
every year it seems like they're always right on that bubble, 15, 16, 17, trying to get in the playoffs. Fortunately for the 20, he ran second in that first stage, scored some points there. But to your point, Jeff, that's going to be really all the points he gets as he won't be able to continue. I tell you, all the other crew chiefs and drivers are seeing this as well, though. We've heard a lot of radios about vibrations, right front wearing. We've heard some radio from the 18 about the right front. Let's hear what he had to say. Got no front tires. Right front probably the one shaking here. Take what it's giving you. Just feel like I overuse the inside edge with the steering wheel angle, so I'm trying to not do that, but. Oh, still another uh, 15 away, 12 to 15. We gotta get in the window. We're gonna make it. So he's saying we're not gonna make it. He's worried about the right front tire. He's already feeling a vibration. He feels like he's wore out the inside edge of the right front tire by turning the steering wheel too much because he's tight. This is a teammate to the 20 car just before the 20 car's accident. Yeah, so listen, as a crew chief, what can I do? Air pressure maybe help a little bit. You can't change the camber now. I'm not sure that would help anyway. The best thing you could do is keep your car turning. It seems to me that not everyone is having this issue. I don't know what the 20s balance was before the accident, but Kyle Busch, a veteran, a champion, seemed to be very confident, Dale, right, that he was hurting the right front. He could feel it through the steering wheel that he was going to hurt that right front tire. So if I was thinking I was going to go one step, I might now go two steps to the freer yeah. side and let you know i got to help you some. But I think Kyle was in fear of exactly what eventually happened to his teammate. You could hear it in his voice. I'm not, we're not going to make it. This right front tire is not going to, we're not going to go any further. And that is a crew chief as a, for a track, Rick, that we say track position. You got to stay out. You got to be the leader. You got, well, guess what? Normally that's all about fuel, right? Well, how much fuel? How long can I run? What can my strategy be? Well, that only works if the right front tire can match your fuel load. So pit road is open now as they work on that access road and the, the fluid that was put down by the 20 of Eric Jones after that hard contact with the outside wall. And we're seeing quite a few takers now that pit road is open looking for some fresh Goodyear tires. Marty. Rick Chase Elliott led all 25 laps of that stage to a terrific run for that race team. Chase saying the car got a little bit tight at the end of that run, but he was very happy with it. Obviously, that clean air means everything. Same thing for Matt Benedetto. He said that car was tight, and obviously, Junior mentioned that. Denny Hamlin was able to make that pass. They're going to take a small air pressure adjustment in the right front to free him up. Denny Hamlin said in traffic, my car is way too free. He said, but when, I'm, I'm sorry, way too tight. But when I'm out front, the balance was perfect. Gabe Hart says, I'm going to free you up just a little bit to make it better in traffic in case we're back there. Four fresh Goodyear tires for all of these guys. And again, some two tire takers here, Rick, that will win the race off pit road. Yeah, big stops for William Byron and Austin Dillon, both making up nine and ten point or ten positions respectively with a two tire stop. And under caution because of that, Eric Jones hard into the wall here at Indy.
Closing in on the halfway point of this race, the big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard telecast presented by Advanced Auto Parts. A year ago, Darrell Wallace Jr., Bubba, had one of his best runs, finished third here at the racetrack. And recently, of course, this young man has taken quite a leadership role within the sports, and he's been at the forefront of the social justice movement on the national scale. As a matter of fact, uh, making change in NASCAR very recently uh, when he suggested to the NASCAR officials and, and the powers that be to get rid of the Confederate flag. Uh, didn't think that it was uh, inviting to everyone. Uh, and so that happened. And so he's making a change already uh, and a lot of pressure. And, and guys, you know, you drivers, the mayor and, of course, Dale Jr., a 15-time uh, fan favorite, you guys have had the pressure of the sport on your shoulders. And it seems like Bubba has taken that role now. Yeah, Bubba's done a great job uh, over the last couple of months. I've followed Bubba's career since he was in a K&N series, and uh, he has a lot of passion. He's a great personality, and we've seen what he can do in really good equipment on the racetrack in the truck series with Kyle Busch and the Xfinity series with Roush, and we just haven't been able to see him in that type of equipment in the Cup series. He so badly wants to succeed at this level, but he teamed up with Richard Petty, a team that was struggling. And they have worked together to really improve things. The Chevrolet's better this year. We're seeing great runs out of all the Chevrolet teams, Bubba included. And he's driving with a lot of passion this year. You know, he's 26 years old, trying to make his way in the world in this series. And this is very, very difficult. And on top of that, all the pressures, you know, when he raised his hand and said, I want to be a leader uh, in social justice, he also put that pressure on him. So it's a lot on this young man. Uh, as a driver, as a crew chief, Making your way in this series is one of the most difficult things you'll ever do. It is cutthroat. It is pressure filled from the time you get in the race car to the time you leave the racetrack. It, it, it never leaves you. It's 24-7. And it's just a lot of pressure on all these young drivers. And we've seen that from Bubba. But he's stepped up. He's, a, he's run his best over the last month, month and a half. It's been fun to watch him take that pressure and then do something with it. He has stepped up, Jeff. His performance has improved with the pressure. Uh, we mentioned how he's been vocal for change in NASCAR, and I want to applaud NASCAR, specifically Steve Phelps, the president of NASCAR, for listening, for understanding and trying to take the sport in the right direction. I think the change on the flag is welcoming to everyone, and that's the goal, is to have everyone welcome to come to the races. And I applaud Bubba's voice in that movement, and it's great to see him be talked about, not just for what he's doing off the track, but bringing that performance on the track. It's great to see. He ran third in this race a year ago, Rick. It's still early. We've seen a lot of strategy calls. There's no talent currently in the 16th position, but you know we've seen these running order swap around very quickly. The 43 could get cycled to the front. Yeah, Bubba's a friend. I've seen him since he came into the truck series uh, when he first started in racing. Uh, and he was one of those guys who said, you know what? I want to be known as a race car driver that just happens to be black. But he's also uh, making a change now in the world and in NASCAR.
It's good to see Eric Jones emerge from the infield care center after a really hard hit, one that looked like it took your breath away, Eric. What did you feel out of the car leading up to that moment? I mean, the Stanley Camry was pretty quick and um, kind of just trying to move to the front and get some track position. And, uh, you know, I, I guess we had a right front go down. I felt it pop and then, uh, you know, I was kind of along for the ride. It was a pretty hard hit, but uh, it's a shame. You know, the Stanley Camry was uh, fast. I mean, uh, you know, I think we just needed to get up towards the front a little more and we could have contended. And, uh, you know, it's a shame. It's kind of the story of our season. Uh, we just had a rough year and things just not going our way. So um, hopefully we can just turn it around, keep bringing fast cars, and, you know, have things turn around for us. Thank you, Eric. Yep. 18 to go now in stage two. William Byron in the 24. Austin Dillon trying a two-tire stop, and that has got them out in front of the field. Oh, wow. Oh, got that. Yeah, Austin was able to take that spot away. I thought William was going to get on the right rear quarter panel, but he wasn't able to. It's going to hurt William. Oh, oh William's oh. got a left front tire issue. Blew up. The left front tire blows up on the 24. Remember, just took right here. sides. Two tires only on the last pit stop. That left front had time on it. I don't know if you ran over something. Left front came apart. Yeah, he might have, oh. kind of was slid, might have slid that left front into the pit stall or something. Great point, Dale. Great point. I didn't see the pit stop, but that would be what you would expect, right? Damage it right away. It explodes. You see the disappointment out of Chad Knauss. See right here, this is only right on the start on the front straightaway. I think he's good right here. I thought he had a great run. Was going to be able to clear the three car. There's no contact at any point that I saw with the three in the left front of the 24, guys. Right here, watch the left front tire, right on top of the left front tire. Already on the ground a little yep. bit there. And boom, right there. Blows the hood and the fender off of it. So the caution comes back again. Caution. Caution for that 24, Kelly. And Rick, I can tell you that uh, William Byron said something broke right there, and then he said the left was dragging. So that was something broke leading up to all of that. Uh, William Byron, as you know, had been on old tires. Uh, they only took two on that last stop. Yeah, I'm just speculating that he might have drugged that left front end of the stall. It's already worn out. So if he's pitting under uh, with, with four old tires and slides it even just a foot, that could be enough to get it to the fabric, Steve. Yeah, exactly. It, you see the disappointment, Jack. And as I spoke with him this morning, and, you know, he said, I haven't been to the shop since March, since we loaded to go to Atlanta way back in March, this pandemic for a hands-on crew chief, Rick trying to figure out, you know, how to prepare for these races. And he saw familiar, he said, I'm not good without any practice. William doesn't have a lot of experience without any practice. And from a guy that I was able to work with for over two decades, a guy I saw win championship after championship after championship, he didn't sound like he had that Chad Canal swagger. Like he had a little questions like, what do I do to make this work better and run better? He was having a good day, great pit calls, got points for the 24, but Kelly, a flat left front tire is going to hurt the day for the 24 car. Yeah, obviously they had been strategizing to capitalize on as many points as they can because they've been kind of mired back in those owner's points, which affects their starting position by that draw. You talk about Chad Knauss and the lack of practice. Young team, he said, I've got young engineers, young mechanics. My plan was to teach them. And now without being in the shop and having limited time at the track, he really hasn't been able to develop this team the way that he had planned. So they go to work on the 24 of William Byron as Chad Knaus looks on from on top of the pit box, but not what William Byron was hoping for on that restart.
crappy batter and yellow cake batter shakes. Instead of licking batter off the spoon, now you can sip it. Delicious fudge blended with 100% real ice cream and topped with a cherry. Only for a limited time at Saucy. The IndyCar Series rolls on next weekend from Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Coverage Saturday on NBCSN and Sunday on NBC, the home of the Indy 500. Scott Dixon stay perfect. Right. Rick, you know, one thing we definitely missed was that roar of the crowd when Eric climbed out. And, and so many times, that's a real signature. Fans love to show their appreciation when they know their driver's okay. But one fan that was cheering is outside, Scott Collier. We saw him outside this morning. He's been at every brickyard since they started in 94. He's also a huge Indy 500 fan, but he always buys 10 tickets. And he was sitting out there this morning. He brought his TV. He said, I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be here to show my support however I can. But we've also seen fans lining the streets all week weekend long to really show that they want to be here, that they appreciate the sport. We can't wait to get them back inside here, guys, but these fans, they make everything possible. So we're going to keep working hard at NBC to keep bringing the fans to the race all these different ways that we can. But everybody watching at home, we love you and appreciate you. Yeah, Scott Collier, that Brownsville, Indiana native, actually had one of those tickets signed by Jeff Gordon for his Rickyard win in 1994. Let's listen in to the three radio of Austin Dillon. Four just got tight because of the tire out there. That's what I'm thinking. I haven't seen anybody get beat up top yet. Not in the last couple of years here, at least. The biggest thing is the rubber is making me tight when I get my right front in it. But as long as he had a tire going down, I'm fine with trying it. You think that's what was happening? Just the tire going down? So Austin Dillon is leading this race. On the hood, there are 1,200 names. And those are names of U.S. military veterans. They're all. Dow employees and RCR employees and their family members. So on this 4th of July weekend, a great patriotic show there of support from Austin Dillon and the three team. Marty. Hey, Rick, one real, uh, real quick point on the William Byron tire that let go. Chase Elliott, his teammate, was behind him before that restart. And Steve, he said the entire time, the entire lap coming to green, he saw the 24 dragging the left side of the entire car. So what would that lead you to believe that was going on with the 24? Well, the left side is already very slow, but or very low to the ground, but not dragging. That tells me he must have had either a slow leak from running something over. Uh, we looked at the pit stop, Dale. I liked your idea of flat spotting it. It wasn't appeared that it had been flat spotted, but a slow leak finally gets low enough, Rick, on air that the tire just fails. Either way, result the same. Unfortunate for the 24. It's been a great opportunity, though, for the 95 car. Christopher Bell, who's been having some temperature issues, running a little warm on that car, got a caution opportunity to tune that car in. We heard Austin Dillon talking about which lane he was going to pick. Kind of wanted the bottom, it sounded like to me, but kind of got talked into the top. A lot of that has to do with what the pusher is behind you. Let's see if Kurt Busch can push him. Maybe 13 laps to go here in stage two. Austin Dillon. Denny Hamlin making up row one. Did he get a big enough shove into turn number one? Here comes Hamlin on the inside. The key right here for Austin is just to almost break even with you through this part of the corner, and then he should beat him off the corner. Should have more momentum down the back straightaway. And then here comes the push from Harvick. Harvick's going to go up. three wide. Harvick oh, almost the into the lead. <laughs> All the way to the bottom of the racetrack, and Harvick takes the lead at Indy. And I thought he was going to push him. I flinched. You have well, to take I, those runs. You have to take every run you get, especially against Denny Hamlin, who looks like he has the oh, best car. Ryan Blaney, Blaney hard into the wall. Oh, my goodness. Blaney was running 12th. We saw he got damaged on pit road earlier and fought back up to 12th. Right side tires are up for Blaney. I need to fix it if we can do anything here. Pace, the leader has just got the pace card in one. A lot of damage to the driver's side of that 12. Yeah, he's got left rear damage, but also the left front has hit the wall. I have to assume it's damaged the toe and suspension of the car. Yeah, I agree. Heavy, heavy damage. You see the flap out of the roof flap up there, and that black piece of fabric. Part of the operation as the car spins around, tries to keep it onto the ground. It's probably. Let's see what happened here. Side here, left side. Oh, it's hard to tell. 
Was he and Brad, wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't that Brad Kozlowski, his teammate? Must have been some contact or something that got Blaney turned around. If Blaney was on the inside and got loose into Brad or what? Or if he had someone. Here, let's take a look at Magano. Oh, looks like the, the 12 gets loose. Yep. Hard to tell if anybody was in his left rear quarter panel. Another look, you know, this will be helpful. There you see Blaney. Oh, yeah. Like sit down into the corner. I think he, I think he just got loose, right? Yeah. Carried some speed in there, got loose. Brad Kozlowski, great. He must have saw him out of his peripheral vision, chased it up the track so the 12 wouldn't take him with him. Wow. So they're working on the left side damage for Ryan Blaney. He has brought the caution out. There's been six cautions already today. Now watch this again. Bell's pushing him right there. See right there, he shook a little bit. I wonder if I wonder if Ryan was just going a little bit quicker into three than he thought he was, you know, than he thought he was. He got a big shove. Loose, it was just so early we got loose. Yeah. Up the racetrack and just stayed off of the two of Brad Kozlowski, his teammate at Penske. Joey Logano on pit road now. Kelly. And then you see Joey Logano in that 22 coming to pit road. They have made some pretty significant adjustments for Joey. They've been on pit road a number of times and some lengthy stops. And you see right there the wrench go in. So they're making yet another chassis adjustment. They're going to give them four tires, Marty. 71 to go here in the race, Kelly. So easily you could split this in half. A lot of debate between Brad Kozlowski and Jeremy Bullins about whether to come to pit road. He said, I think if we come get four fresh Goodyears here and fuel, that helps us down the road. So maybe a strategy play now, Steve, to make that second or that last stop a little bit quicker. That's really the goal, Marty. At this point, if you're in the front five, six, eight, ten cars, you've kind of done a nice job managing the race. You're worried now about just getting to the end of this stage. But if you're towards the back, Rick, you got to keep calling the race. Find a way to gain an advantage. There's still 71 laps to go here at Indianapolis. Under 10 laps to go on the second stage in the big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyard. Telecast presented by Advanced Auto Parts. Well, a different day, a different track, but very similar drivers at the front of the field. Yeah, last week at Pocono, Harvick 
wins the first race. But Denny Hamlin gets ahead of him late in the race and wins the second one. So Harvick gets the run, and he knows he has to take it. An opportunity to get in front of this 11 car. He can't pass that up. That could have been a pass that wins the race. Watch Chris Gabehart, Denny Hamlin's crew chief. He knows how important that one spot is. That tells it right there. I, I think if you let Denny Hamlin out front, he's gone. Man, I'm a Gabehart fan. I'd like to see <laughs> that fire, Rick, that fire. The emotion. Coming up on nine to go when they take the green flag here in the second stage. A great launch by Kevin Harvick. Able to clear the 11 before they even got into turn number one. Yeah, but all thinking clear Hamlin here. That means Hamlin will be all the way back to third. Oh, contact. they're almost touching. Wow. Look at the push coming from behind yep. again. Three wide. <laughs> the nine's going to pull the same thing Harvick did the last restart. And Hamlin's getting madder and madder. And so is his crew chief, Chris Gabehart. Austin Dillon fighting though on the outside there in the three. Remember, just right side tires the last time Austin Dillon came to pit road. I haven't seen that outside work at all in turn four, giving Denny a shot to get around a three car. Look at all the momentum Austin lost. And here comes Matt DiBenedetto in the 21 as well. I challenge that three of Austin Dillon, though, guys, with the issues with Jones and Byron. Dillon on that battle bubble, he needs to start being a little more conservative. I think that's what you're seeing, right? When challenged, he kind of gives the spot up. He knows finishing vital today at Brickyard. He's on two tires also. I don't know that that's going to work well for him. Got track position, but now he's lost that track position with two tires. Let's see how that works out. Yeah, the two tires are going to be tighter. Car's not going to want to turn. Now he's behind cars in traffic. That's going to make that problem even worse. Yeah, that old Matt Kenseth sitting right there. Sixth place. Well, Matt Kenseth told me this week that he underestimated how difficult this would be and the lack of practice. Think about it. He was out of the car for a long time. Didn't know anybody on this team. Didn't know these cars. Nothing. No practice. Got to jump in this car knowing nothing about it. It's been a big challenge, but today things are going well. It's good to see it from Matt. He said his goal jumping into this car was to stay within five to eight positions of where Kyle Larson was finishing, which Kyle Larson was finishing right around fifth to eighth. So the first couple races, he did that. He was in the top 10, top 12, but he said the performances just haven't been there these last few races. He's having fun, though. He said he loves his team, loves working with them. He's 48 years old, oldest driver in the field. He hasn't lost his drive to win, oh. I can promise you. He wouldn't be here if he didn't want to. In front of that 18 car, Kyle Busch, as he's riding along, bouncing up the racetrack in turn three. Losing a little bit of turn. Coming up on six to go now, and out front, it's Harvick. He's already put 1.7 seconds between himself and Chase Elliott, now trying to hold off the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Guys, this is an important battle right here because this is going to be the front row. These drivers are, I don't believe, are going to pit at the end of this stage. So Denny Hamlin is going to really push on this nine to try to get in front of him. I imagine, Jeff, you're going to want to be on that front row for the next restart. Yeah, we've seen how important that is. We've also seen the slingshot move if you weren't on the front row. Yeah, if you're, if you're side by side exiting turn two and the guy behind you is single file, we've seen what kind of run he's going to get and put you three wide. So if you're Hamlin, do you just stay in third? Do you concede and say, I want to line up third on the next restart? I don't know if you want to be on the inside. It seems to not be working too well for 11 car so far. But not much he can do. I think if he finishes where he is, he's on the inside. If he finishes second, he's on the inside. It's not work for him. So to your point, Steve, maybe lay back, try something different the next restart. As we watch this battle in the front, there's battle all over the racetrack. A name we haven't talked a lot about today, Ada Tyler Reddick. Well, here he is right in front of the 38, John Hunter Nemechek, two rookies. Look at the big wiggle out of John Hunter up the track. Bubba Wallace in the 43 escapes, but loses momentum. He gets under attack by those two Penske Fords of Brad Keselowski and Joey Logano. Tyler Reddick, I mean, 
As a rookie, he I know he had a little bit of a tough go at Pocono, kind of been mid-pack today, but man, he has just shown up at all these different racetracks. What do you call him, Mr. Exciting? Dale Jr., what do you know? <laughs> he is the action driver for sure. Yeah, we had a conversation with his father before the season started. They all felt, even in his camp before any race was run, that they could make the playoffs. Looking like that's a good possibility. And front row, I mean, McDowell in 17th, Nemechek 18th. That team has just really impressed me this year, how well they've ran every single week. They've improved at least 10 positions this year. How about Ty Dillon? Yeah. Ty Dillon having a good day. Vernon 12th. Cole Custer, another rookie. He's in 13th. Hasn't had a lot to hang his hat on this year, but I think it's important for everyone at Stuart Haas Racing to just tell him, you know what? Have some confidence, stick with the plan. We believe in you. We know you're not gonna pick it up right away. You see him right there, just tucked in behind Ty Dillon at 13. Cole Custer with a quiet day. Ty Dillon in front of us, or in the 12th position. It's a major step. Yeah. From the Xfinity to Cup. It's a major step. And rarely do people just jump in and just hit it right off the bat. We've seen it happen, but it's rare. You got it when you hire a rookie, you have to be committed to him. Alex Bowen on pit road. Yeah, it's been a struggle today for the 88 car. They're going to come in. You see left side tires. Greg Eyes making the call here. Steve, three to go in the stage. This is in the playbook to come before the stage ends, but I'm not sure that Alex is going to gain a ton out of this. But again, running back in the 20s for much of the day today. Well, there's the key. He can only take left side tires because here is the leader, Kevin Harvick. You didn't have time for Gravives to take four. Now it's up to Alex Bowman to have a nice pit exit. He has to use the access lane, though, here in turn two. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to stay in front of the four. The four is going to be coming with a ton of speed. Oh, he's going to have to block. Can he stay in front of him for the last couple laps? Great call if he does. Disaster if he doesn't. Hit and run in 14. Is he going to be able to stay in front of Harvick? And how, what a, and how do left side tires drive? Yeah. You know, a lot of times you put rights on, you're pretty sure you know what it's going to do. You put lefts on, sometimes that's a big gamble. Great corner by the 88. If he gets past, he still gets the free pass, but that's all his track position. This call is purely to stay on the lead lap. He was eight seconds behind when he pitted. Greg Ives doing the homework, doing oh. the math. Will it work, though? Harvick to the inside, trying to put him a lap oh, down. No. And the crew chief, Greg Eyes, is like, ah, yeah. Snake eyes on the dice right there. Snake eyes on the gamble. I'm telling you guys, left side tires you know, under green, I've had them drive so bad that you, you feel like you have a flat. I've had them work too, but rarely do left sides under green if they worked for me in the past. Now Chase Elliott's like, don't hold me up. I got Danny Hamill behind me, two more corners. Come on, old buddy, let me go. Last couple corners here of stage two. And it's going to be Kevin Harvick that will get the stage win. Also getting some stage points will be Chase Elliott, Denny Hamlin, Matt DiBenedetto, Austin Dillon rounding out the top five. Also, we were hearing Alex Bowman was talking about a vibration. Yeah, I don't know if that was before or after the pit stop. We're going to have to find out. So the momentum continues for Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. After coming off a weekend where they split the Pocono doubleheader, now it was the big move by Kevin Harvick to get by the 11, and he gets the win, stage two. He's saying it was after. Oh, okay. Sorry.
Back at Indianapolis, not only is it a doubleheader weekend for all the race teams here, how about a shout out to our technical crew as well, both in Charlotte and here in Indianapolis. And we're especially thinking about Brian Ware, one of our own today. He was nicknamed Snacks. That's why we have the Snack Strong sticker. There you see, because he loves snacks at the racetrack. And we love Brian. He's been battling an illness. He's battling cancer right now back at home in High Point, North Carolina. And Snacks, we're thinking about you today, buddy. So many people doing so many great things for uh, all of us, making our jobs easier. We want to thank everybody. We got Ron and Russell, and we got pit stops going on right now as well. Kelly. Yeah, there's the three of Austin Dillon. He said his car is so good, the best it's been all day. He thinks he's as good as the leaders. He just needs the track position to get up there. Four tires, because remember, last time they came down pit road, they only took two. So they were due for a full set of fresh Goodyear. And as they're racing off the pit road away from the Pagoda where Mike Tirico and DJ are hanging out. Been hanging out here all weekend this IndyCar NASCAR doubleheader great 4th of July celebration. One last visit with the Hall of Famer here. So the story of Pocono the story of the restart has been Harvick and Hamlin and here they are again right in the front of the conversation. Yeah not surprised by that. Uh, they show a lot of speed. You have to have speed here. Two experienced drivers at, at this racetrack. You knew they were going to be a part of the conversation when it comes down to the end of this but they've still got to perform at a high level and their pit crews are going to be under the pressure to get it done under what will probably be a green flag pit stop. Harvick's won twice here. Hamlin looking for his first. The other story of Pocono is trying to beat the sunset. <laughs> the sunset's about 915 over our shoulders here. So we got a little time but not a heck of a lot of time. Well, it's been an odd day. 40 or 20 percent of the field. Eight of the 40 cars out. So significant attrition. There's another driver up there in Chase Elliott. We talked about him in the pre-race and you're keeping an eye on him as he looks strong at the end of that second stage. Yeah sure is. He's got a lot of speed in his car too. But finding the right position getting himself in the right spot especially on restarts here uh, is going to be of utmost importance to stay in the mix. These three drivers have been the talk uh, so far. So who's going to come out of here with a win. I tell you what one thing that, that gets me is this weekend hasn't disappointed with any of the races. It's been everything it was built to be. Yeah this has been nothing but boring. This cup race has been and exciting. <laughs> We've got the whole pagoda to ourselves. So, Rick, we're going to get settled in and watch you guys work your tails off here for this last day. <laughs> well, if you've got uh, any extra light, make sure you shine it down on the racetrack as we see the sun going behind the grandstands there. Uh, points earned today. That's very important as you're looking forward to the playoffs. Kevin Harvick already 16. Chase Elliott 16 today. Again, you earn points if you finish in the top 10 in each of the first two stages and so that's where those points have been earned already today. All right Steve so it comes down once again. Is it going to be Denny Hamlin or is it going to be <laughs> Kevin Harvick or will somebody come in and steal this one. Well I was wrong both races at Pocono. I picked the wrong winner. I had the right two guys but neither guy could win and I'm not sure here. I'm not counting out Chase Elliott yet. I think that the 11 and the four are so consumed with each other. It might be the type of opportunity for the nine to jump in. We have seen a lot of action on Pent Road and remember we're going to see at least one more pit stop. That might be what it comes down to not just the pit crews but on and off pit road if it's under green flag who can make the gamble on these restarts. The action has been action packed but I won't lie. I'm a little jealous of Mike and DJ on top of the Pagoda. Great seats in Indianapolis. Well, Tariko had mentioned he's got a Hall of Famer with him. We've got a Hall of Famer with us. Let's talk to the drivers, Jeff Burton and Hall of Famer Dale Earnhardt Jr. All right, guys, what are you expecting for the final stage? Well, I think we're going to see a tremendous amount of battle for that lead. It's, it's track position is so important. We saw Kevin Harvick make that big aggressive move. But if this thing goes to where you pit on the green, remember, they didn't have practice. No one's practiced a pit stop on the green. Who's going to nail that? Who's going to mess it up? Who's going to get caught speeding on pit road? That could determine who's going to win this race. I've been so impressed by the crew chiefs this year. Without any practice, those guys are the real heroes, putting these cars out on the racetrack so that they're competitive and their drivers trust and believe in them. Nobody's done a better job of that here lately than Rodney Childers. And what he did today to come down pit road and take that gamble early before the comp caution to give them the track position, to put themselves in position to win that he didn't he, he, he didn't expect it but it actually put him in position to win the first stage and his driver goes out there and wins stage two and they might win this race a huge points day going into the playoffs he's also leading the regular season points more playoff points for that four team if they can continue to compete the way they are continue to be strong 
is the four of Kevin Harvey. Let's go to Rutledge Wood. You know, Rick, they couldn't call it the Brickyard without the bricks that used to line this entire track. And now, of course, we just have the yard of bricks. Last year, I was lucky enough to take Dale Jr. over to the creek and go dig around for ourselves, try to find one of the bricks that is shored up on the sides of the creek that runs through the Indy the Brickyard crossing over there. Now, Dale, I'll be honest, was a little bit of a hater for the first 40 minutes or so. Then we got serious. He found some great ones. I tried my luck on Friday. And I'm going to be honest, without my wingman, guys, it was, it was real disappointment. I found a couple good halfsies. I had planned to give this one uh, to Hinch that I found in there, and then Hinch informed me that, uh, no, I have a real brick, and it's a big one. So uh, I definitely noticed you can't leave your wingman. Uh, bring water shoes if you're going to do it. But on the plus side, I did drive my Tundra up here. I got a couple, so maybe I'm going to find a couple fans to send them to this week. I mean, we've been using that NBC Racing Week and hashtag. Dale, do you need a half a brick? I'll tell you how to find those bricks, how to find the, how to find the good ones. They, they would dump them over in that creek in piles. And so if you find a pile of busted ones, you got to dig down about a foot, a foot and a half. It's really soft. Uh, and you'll find the full bricks, man. And they actually still have, like, rubber on them from, from being, if you find the ones that were actually the service of the racetrack and have actually tire rubber worked into them. It's really cool. So were this you what just you were doing when we were working? Well, I was wondering, were, <laughs> were you just holding on to Rutledge's legs as he went underwater to get these? It's uh, really bricks? shallow, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, side note, Rick. I'm not a strong swimmer, Rick. That was a great <laughs> oh, question. <yeah. laughs> Getting ready for the restart. Today's aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. Up in that front row, it's Kevin Harvick and Chase Elliott. Green flag back in the air. The player at the front at 95, Christopher Bell. The outside lane. Harvick almost clear, but Denny Hamlin actually allowed the nine car and helped the nine car Chase Elliott get back up there to the inside. Now Denny Hamlin's in position. If he can clear, oh, contact. Made contact okay. there with the now 95. The 90, right, 95 is going to line up, push this 11. They're side by side up front. The 11 is going to have the run. He's going to try it. Here comes Hamlin to the inside. And Hamlin will make the pass. Oh, yeah, not so right fast. Quarter battle. Look at that move by Harvick. Ah, oh, that's aggressive. Didn't get to the bottom right there, though. It's going to be OK. That was an impressive power move by Kevin Harvick to keep that lead. One and two once again. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin did everything right set up to be the leader and Kevin Harvey just wasn't going to have it. That's some great racing by great race car drivers. Put it all on the line. Was still a long way to go. 54 laps remaining in this one as Harvick out in front and how he threw it into turn three. Look at this. I mean that is complete trust that your car is going to stick, and also that Denny Hamlin knows he's there. See him in there working at steering wheel. I think he just knows that you can't let that 11 car get the lead. He knows from last week in that second Pocono race when they pit cycled and, and the 11 cycled to the front and ended up winning the race. Harvick thought he had an even better car in that second Pocono race. Frustrated he lost that. Doesn't want to allow that 11 car to get that track position. Once he gets that track position, probably not going to be giving it up. Hard I'm trying to hang on to that lead. Once again, guys, the rookie battle has moved throughout the pack. We covered them when they were back there in 15, 16, to 17. Here you go. Christopher Bell in the 95, Tyler Rank in the eighth, fourth, and fifth. By good strategy, but not luck. They're not there backwards on tires or upset on fuel. They are on the same strategy as the leaders, running both in the top five, Rick. These two rookies, Reddick, really been all year long. But Christopher Bell, I mean, nothing went right early. Mechanical issues, trying to iron out some details with the 95 car. He seems like he's settling down, gets some confidence. Super excited for this rookie class and the years to come, Kelly. These rookies have said just how much that Rookie of the Year title would mean. Well, coming to the green, here is the communication between Tyler Reddick and his crew chief, Randall Burnett. How about a little enthusiasm in there, homie? Uh, don't worry. I'm going to 
saving it for this, uh, this green flag I'm about to see in another minute or so. I'm ready to see something special, Randy. What do you think? I'm with you. I'd like to see something special on the green so. I think they've seen a lot of special out of Tyler Reddick. When I asked Randall Burnett about him and making the move to the Cup Series, he said, look, Tyler's just got it. Some drivers do, some don't. He's got it, but he also works really, really hard. He does a lot of studying to be prepared for these races. And so far, he's really shown up as a rookie here in the Cup Series. Kelly, that's great information. I spoke to Randall this week. I just asked him, what's the biggest transition been? And he said, you know, I believe in Tyler. I believe in what he can do. We've been focusing on the full race. We talk about how exciting and action-packed he is, Rick, and it, he's gotten away with it. Right? He is back-to-back -back Xfinity champions. We don't doubt his style, but this is the Cup Series. The field is deeper and the races are longer. And Randall said, I don't tell him how to drive. I just remind him the goal. And the goal today is going to be 400 miles. Here he is in the later stages of a race up front, showing maturity for a very young race car driver, only 24 years old. You know the thing about those two is they have fun. Yeah, they, I mean, they have a great time. Yeah. They laugh, they carry on. They're just here having a good time. No pressure, just racing with your buddies. Tyler Reddick said aggressive nature doesn't help him at times, so he tries to calm it down a little bit as we go nonstop. Harvick and Hamlin still one and two. And Junior, what a great show. Lost Speedways coming up on Peacock streaming services. Yeah, I've been a, you know, passionate about abandoned racetracks all my life. We go and lean into some of these racetracks and understand their history, uh, what made them great, what they meant to the communities. We uh, actually go put our boots on the ground and discover what these tracks look like today. It's a lot of fun. Obviously, the King joined us for a show. Me and Matthew Dillner, we had a blast filming this. Can't wait for folks to see it. July 15th on Peacock. Should be great. A lot of excitement around the history of the sport as two guys that uh, will surely be knocking on the Hall of Fame's door when they decide to step away. But it's not going to be for a while. Actually, Kevin Harvick made the comment uh, earlier 
He said, I think the way racing is now, it's so much more mental. Even though all of us are staying as fit as we possibly can stay, he said, it's so much more mental. I think you could race into your 50s. And right now, he's early 40s. Marty. Rick, an outstanding battle on the racetrack between the two guys who have proven since the COVID break they have been the best in the Cup Series, Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick. That's playing out on the racetrack. It's also playing out on pit road. Rodney Childers in pit stall number two. Chris Gabehart in pit stall number one. So, Steve, when Rodney makes a move, Chris Gabehart, you can see it. You can see how close they are. They're looking each other straight in the eyes, trying to decide who's going to win this Brickyard 400. And it could come down to that last stop. That final window opens in about five laps. Bravo to our cameraman. That's what it's like. I've sat on that pit box. I've battled the pit box next to me. You look over, and every once in a while, you'll catch their eyes, and you know, you respect one another, you know where you're at, but this is chess. Our drivers are moving the pieces, and you and I get to decide who goes next. Denny Hamlin doing a spectacular job of keeping Kevin Harvick in touch. He would love to get by him, Rick, but he's not going to abuse his car. Just keep him out front, a half a second out, a half a second out. Don't let him run away. That way, you perhaps could beat him on a green flag cycle. Remember, the race for the win, it doesn't have to be a pass on the racetrack. A pass on pit road, they give you that trophy too. That's true, but you just saw him go by a lap car, Timmy Hill, lap traffic. That could play a role in this race. If they do run down some lap traffic, if we continue under green and they start getting into lapping race cars on a regular basis, that could cause the momentum of that four car to break and give Denny the opportunity he's looking for. Denny's faster right now. Denny, the last four or five laps has been faster. See right here the distance behind the leader. He's closed that gap. See that right there, that lap traffic? That's what Junior's talking about. That would have happened in the middle of the corner. It would have really hurt Harvick big time. Which they're coming up on some lap traffic here as they enter the turn. This is where Kevin's got to time it just right. So hard to do. This one's going to be pretty easy because he's going to, lap car's going to get out of the way. And the reason we talk about this battle is because even after they pit, if a yellow comes out, they're not coming back. This pit stop under green will be their last pit stop of the day unless they have some sort of issue or accident. Right? How can these two be so much the class of the field? They have already separated themselves by two and a half seconds from third place Chase Elliott right now. Well, Rick, I don't think we should be surprised. I mean, one of them has won 41 times and Denny Hamlin. And the other drivers won 52 times, you know, 93 wins between the two of them. So it's not a shock that these two are battling for the wins. Yeah, every year it seems to have two or three guys really set themselves apart from the rest of the field throughout the regular season. The more confusing part is if you're a teammate to one of these cars, you go home and you say, well, man, I know what they have for a setup, and I can't keep up with them. Well, that's the thing now without practice during out during the weekend, their teammates can't really lean on each other right. like they used to and be able to get closer and improve their cars from Friday to Sunday. Now they just show up and race and hope for the best. The interesting thing is that other drivers can review the data, the driving, the driving data from last year, right? And really see how these guys drive the race cars, but they can't adapt to it. It's knowing data and understanding how somebody drives the car is great, but that doesn't mean it feels right to you. You want to see a driver work, Rick, 180 miles an hour down the straightaway and watch just above the headrest. Look through that clear shield of Kevin Harvick. He's going to look forward and he's going to look up. Look forward and look up. He's got to keep right there. Checking where Danny Hamlin is, making sure he doesn't have a run. The end of each straightaway, just a glance in the mirror, making sure he knows where his adversary is, how far back. With this lap traffic right here, he's going to be afraid the 11 is going to get a run. I'm sure he's going to look in the mirror even more off this point. And he's been really getting closer and closer. The last couple of corners, turn three and four, he seems to be quite a bit better. We know the move Denny wants to make. And we've seen it earlier in the race. That's in this end of the racetrack. Get right to that rear bumper of the four car. Turn be before he does. Get your left side below his left side. Take the air off the inside of that car. And it will not let Kevin Harvick get to the bottom. That's his strategy. All right, guys, this time around, it'll be 40 laps to go. I believe the pit window has opened from here. It'll be a little of a stretch, but I think both of these guys can make it. Now the question is, when do you come? If you're the 11, do you try to beat the four to pit road? If you're the four, do you try to come first? Or if you're the 11, do you come with them? And you say, I'm going to chase you on the pit road. Jeff, as a driver, do you feel you can make up time coming to pit road chasing someone in there? I, I want clean air. I, I, if I'd rather pit lead, I'd rather pit being the leader than pitting with the four pitting from the, you know, in second spot because I can see better. I can judge myself better. The big difference is, or the big deal is, 
what is tire wear like? Right? If, right. if the tires are falling off, like we saw last week at Pocono, the first guy on pit road will have an advantage because he's on new tires sooner. So who's going to blink first? Well, the question is, last week, the four came first, and the 11 used the clean air to run some of the fastest laps of the race, low on fuel, and kind of a Formula One style, right? He gapped the four using that clean air. But they were nowhere near this club. Yeah, you can't do that here because of the tire fall off. You know, if, if, if the four pits, He's not going to, the, the 11 won't be able to run faster laps and then beat him off pit road. Yeah, if I'm Gabe Hart this week, come I actually down. come first. Yeah. I want to be the first to pit road. The only thing about that, though, is the 11's faster than the 4. If the 11 had clean air, right. he would be able to go faster than he's going right now. We just saw since they last pitted how many laps. They've gone 44 now. Steve, is that a, a fear at all because of fuel? We knew that the, the fuel window was only about 38 to 40. Well, a ton of yellows in there. We see our first taker of the eight. Oh, we heard it on the radio. Pit, pit, pit. Here comes Here's the call right here. Chris Gabehart has pulled the shoot. First guy to pit road, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. You see him at the top of your screen blend now. They need to be perfect. Count him into the pit stall. Long pit boxes. Denny Hamlin has to hit his pit sign. Give his pit crew the best chance, Marty. And Chris Gabehart had called Denny Hamlin to pit road. Guess what? Rodney Childers also called Kevin Harvick to pit road. He didn't get that message. They went one extra lap unintentionally. So Chris Gabehart, Denny Hamlin, going to get a little bit of an advantage here. Get those four fresh Goodyear tires on a little bit sooner than Kevin Harvick will because of a miscommunication. And Rodney Childers said, Timmy, we have to pit to Tim Fito and his spotter. Denny was very happy with the car, a little bit tight. He was concerned it would get tighter the longer they ran. The Goodyear tires are on. We'll have to see Harvick down pit road next time. That was a clean stop out of the 11. The Ford of pit road looked clean to me. No tires locked up. All right, 11, check, clean pit stop. Rodney Childers, Kevin Harvick, your turn. Can you match the speed of the 11 on pit road? Marty. Let's see where Kevin Harvick cycles back out again. They wanted to pit with Denny Hamlin. They did not do that. Harvick saying the car tight, especially in the center of the corner. That was his biggest concern. Pit stops at good side. The Brickyard 400. Kevin Harvick trying to become a three-time winner of one of NASCAR's crown jewel races. Four fresh Goodyear tires. You're also going to see a wedge wrench go in and make an adjustment, trying to free up that car for the four car of Kevin Harvick and the Goodyear tires going on. We'll see when he cycles out with the 11 as Denny Hamlin charges down the front stretch. Look, would be a little bit slow on the left front. There it is. Kevin Harvick leading Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin is going to beat him. No problem here on the blend lane. The four down bottom. Denny Hamlin in the picture. Checkmate leader Denny Hamlin at Indy by a ton. It was not clean on the left side stop. For Kevin Harvick. For Kevin Harvick, the left sides were slow, both the front and the rear. Now, what can Kevin Harvick do? Can he catch up to Denny Hamlin or will he check out as we go NASCAR nonstop?
You're watching the big machine hand sanitizer 400 at the Brickyards. Telecast presented by Advance Auto Parts. And live PGA Tour golf action continues this week at Muirfield Village in Dublin, Ohio for the first ever Workday Charity Open. That coverage Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern on the Golf Channel. Look at that golf course, Rick. LPGA plays there at the Brickyard yep. Crossings. My friends at the Brickyard Crossings said, golf course is open tomorrow after the race. Talk about a fun trip, a race and some golf. This is actually the race leader, 42 of Matt Kenseth. We were covering the pit stop at the 11 and the four because when this all cycles around, that is going to be for the race win. Kevin Harvick, or excuse me, Matt Kenseth in the 42. Kyle Busch runs second in the 18. Joey Logano in the 22. They're out front, but they all need fuel to get to the finish. How can they benefit? Could they go, say, five to ten laps, and then a caution comes out potentially? And would would we see Kevin and Denny have to pit as well? Well, now they would now have to pit. The big advantage for Matt Kenseth right here is he was last on pit road at lap 102. So he could come and maybe perhaps take just right sides and much less fuel than Denny Hamlin. I don't think it would be enough to offset the speed of the 11 in the four car, but it will move him up the rankings, Jeff, and I think it's their best strategy at this point. Yeah, put themselves in position, do something different, try to steal a win. They've run top 10 all day long. Try something unique. Right now, Hamlin and Harvick are about 30 seconds behind. And, and, and as that's going on back there, Harvick has been faster, consistently faster than Denny Hamlin. Five laps in a row, four laps in a row or so, he ran a quicker time. He cut that gap. Still a long way to go. But he cut that deficit. So up front is Matt Kenseth. Again, he took over after the COVID-19 outbreak. And Kyle Larson was removed from the 42. So you just we gapped to Kevin Harvick, has closed in on, on Hamlin. Hamlin was much further ahead when that, that pit stop ended. Yeah, we haven't seen Harvick in a situation where he's been pushed to try to pass a car as quick as Denny's. We've seen Denny racing around the top five and passing fast race cars. Be interesting to see if the four of Harvick can run him down and then put something together to get by him. You know, Harvick that time was the fastest car on the racetrack. Hamlin was the fourth fastest. Harvick about a tenth and a half quicker. As Denny pushing as hard as he can go. We're saving just a little bit. And the 30 to go. See Kenseth on the left side of your screen. Kyle Busch, Logano, Keselowski. Puster currently in fifth. To Benedetto, McDowell. As I mentioned, all these guys, Rick, were just on pit road around lap 100. Run a little longer, have a little shorter pit stop. Or to your point, catch a caution. While that maybe not helped them for these two, it's unfortunate, but at some point in every race, you know maybe you're not calling the race to win. You're calling the race to get the best finish you can. Kelly. 22 of Joey Logano making his way down pit road. They just have not gotten the handling right on the 22, and they can't get it to turn. Joey said he is wicked tight in traffic. Said, look, we just hit dirty air, and then it's done. It's going to get four Goodyear tires on this stop, but it's been a difficult day for Joey Logano. A struggle, guys. Yeah, they had one early, but since the break, it has not gone well. Yeah, two out of the first four races, Joey Logano and this 22 team won to start the season, and then the big long break because no, of the coronavirus. No top 15s in the last four races. Probably another one outside the top 15 today. I'm telling you guys, looking there makes a big difference as we are right on board with Joey Logano going back to the racetrack. Those leaders of Kenseth and Kyle Busch are running some great laps. Now they have to come to pit road. Man, it just shows if you can get out front. Oh, boy. Wow. Huge. And this is going to be a caution right here. Big hit again. This time it's Alex Bowman in the 88. That looks a lot like Eric Jones's wreck. He was running eighth. Last on pit road on lap 103. See the window net down. That's the driver signaling to the safety crew when they come up that he's okay. But he'll wait in the car until the AMR safety team gets to him. So Alex Bowman into the wall hard and bringing out this the eighth caution. And the whole right side just flat. 
We've seen some hard hits here last year with this package for the first time. Remember, a lot of hard wrecks in that race. Landon Castle, really tough hit here last year. Let's take a look at this. Looks like getting down into turn one. They're coming at him. Oh, oh, boy. oh, oh boy. Wow. Again, a really hard hit there. Looks like the right front went down. I, I, I don't even know how to describe what that feels like. It, 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 your entire body goes through this incredible trauma. Yeah, I tell you, the, the, the hit is, is tough, but the moment before it, when the tire goes and you're out of control and you're, no, you're going straight into that fence, you have a moment to really understand just exactly how bad this is going to be. It's the most terrifying moment as a driver. There's no question in your mind you're gonna you're gonna hit really hard. The safer barriers that are put around all of these racetracks. Andy was the first track to have them. Yep. That's styrofoam. Those are styrofoam pretty much pyramids or triangles that are behind the, the steel wall, and that's supposed to absorb some of that initial contact. Kelly. And so now the guys who have yet to make their stop on pit road will make their way down now, including the 18 of Kyle Busch. And as pit stops cycle through, he pits from the second position. He says, pretty happy with the bounce. He's just been getting stuck in traffic, but it turns well on restarts. So he didn't ask for any big changes. Four good your tires, Marty. Best run for Matt Kenton since he's been back in the cup car. Chad Johnson is going to make the call for four fresh Goodyear tires for him. Jeremy Bullens and Brad Kozlowski had made the decision to run long. Caution, yeah, help him out a little bit here. Four fresh Goodyear tires for them. Most of those cars tight in traffic, which a lot of guys are complaining about. Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick obviously staying out, guys. Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, and Christopher Bell, the rookie, also stays out and looks like he will be third. We saw the race off the pit road, but caution coming out for that big hit. And Alex Bowman.
again a little bit later start because of the lightning strike uh, before we got the green flag here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. You see sunset tonight, 9.16 p.m. Eastern. Those clouds maybe getting in front of the sun as it sets here on Speedway, Indiana. We're under this, the eighth caution of the day at Indianapolis. While we're under a break, let's check in with Rutledge Wood. Rick, Rick, we've talked so much about all the different improvements that have been made since Rick, uh, Roger Penske, excuse me, bought the track. One of them was this lift right here for Victory Circle to be able to take the car and hold it up for all the fans to see. Almost a hat tip to North Wilkesboro and what that used to be like. But it's amazing we've seen Scott Dixon and Chase Briscoe on this historic weekend. But when you look at the joy it brought to the fans at North Wilkesboro, hard not to love a place like this. But the fans, when they get back here, are going to see the winner right up here like Olympus rising above the Serengeti, Rick. <laughs> And we're seeing a lot of that uh, North Wilkesboro footage there. Pretty cool. And by the way, Rutledge, my checkbook uh, definitely could not have afforded the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I know as you tried to give that to me. Thank you. Getting ready for the restart. Once again, it's Hamlin and Harvick and Christopher Bell stayed out. Another driver who stayed out and could make this interesting is Matt Kenseth. He's going to line up fourth and has about 10 lap fresher tires. Let's check in on the four teams radio after that pit stop. Yeah, I called you the lap before, but sounds like two of us were talking. You never heard it. And then we didn't have a very good stop either. So we'll, we'll try to get it back here. So we were wondering because Marty reported to us that there was a lack of communication. We were wondering how did Kevin Harvick not hear, you know, the call to come to pit road. Well, if two people key the radio up at once, the driver hears nothing. And that sounds like that may have been that simple little thing right there that you never think about. That could be the difference between winning this race and not. Well, you see on the left-hand side, Hamlin, Harvick, Bell, all with four fresh tires, but they pitted lap 123. Well, Kenseth just came off pit road with four fresh tires. Dylan with a little gamble, two tires. Custer put himself in a great position, Kozlowski. So as we talk about those guys running longer, basically allowed them, you know, the chance to put fresh tires. So you see the four is standing on pit wall. This is during the green flag pit stop when the 11 came in. So that just kind of backs up. I think the team must have heard him. They were close to the crew chief radio. Might have bled through, huh, Jeff? But sometimes when they get crossed over, you can't hear it in the car. Small things, right? Yeah, simple Basics. as a communication. If we go back to last week, the race was between the same two drivers. Denny Hamlin hounding Harvick in that first Pocono race. Harvick wins it. But in the second one, Denny Hamlin uses some great pit strategy by his crew chief. He's able to cycle in front of Harvick, and he's done it again today. Earlier here, Kevin Harvick with a very aggressive move on a restart to take the lead. Kevin, Kevin taught Denny Hamlin what he needed to do. Denny did the same thing. But Kevin Harvick able to battle back on the outside and keep the lead. And then both of these guys were running first, second. Denny Hamlin gets called on pit road first. Then Kevin Harvick gets called on pit road and that little bit of a slow stop. And on top of that, a little bit pressure tire on the 11 sooner. Denny Hamlin gets out front. Look at the nope. numbers already for these two this season. Yeah, we know it was a misunderstanding on the radio for the four team to get him to pit road when they needed him to get there, but two weeks in a row. Skate Park's done a great job. Marty. And even when he told them they were going to pit, the crew kind of waited just a second, Junior, kind of standing on the ground because, as we mentioned, Kevin Harvick's pit stall not very far away at all. Rodney Childers just told Kevin Harvick, hey, I want you to pounce early in this run because the 11 has had some tire issues. They really haven't had tire issues, but he's telling Kevin Harvick that. But Chris Gabehart did say the longest green flag run today so far, 27 laps. We have to go five laps further than that for the guys who pitted at lap 122. Check out row two. A rookie and then the oldest driver in the racetrack, Matt Kenseth. Both want to win, win this race as badly as that front row. 
Christopher Bell, he's the rookie in the 95. Green flags back. And look at them fan out as they get ready to go into one. Denny Hamlin has cleared Kevin already. But here comes Matt Kenzen. Oh, Harvick a little bit loose under, under Matt Kenzen. It's into the side of that 42 car. Now he's lost a few spots here. Christopher Bell battling for second place. Let's see if Harvick's going to do the same thing, make it three wide down the back straightaway. He pushes, he pushes, now he slides out. Tries to get to the inside of the 42 of Kenzen. Look at that mess behind him. Harvick makes the move, he's back up to second. But can he run down Denny Hamlin? He wasn't able to do it before the caution. Christopher Bell falling back now in that 95. You see the 18 at Kyle Busch down to the bottom back there. He had to pit a second time under the yellow because of a flat tire. Not sure what happened there. Trying to recover as the 21 of Matty D makes a big move three wide, takes a position. Matt DiBenedetto in the 21. That Wood Brothers 21 famed car here with 21 laps to go at Indy. Hamlin, Harvick, Kenseth, Cole Custer. Back up front, it's tight. Look, Look at the, the right front. Car, the right yeah. front. Is, is it looks like the wrap. The wrap's coming off of the right front. Oh, trying to jump on the outside the of Hamlin. Yeah, he sure did. He was coming fast on that 11 car, running him down quickly. The contact with Kenseth, I think, has uh, on the restart causing the wrap on the four car maybe to come loose. Do you feel that as a driver? Is there a vibration there? I don't know. I don't know if you'll feel that at all. But I don't think it's hurting his car right now as long as there's no real body damage from he's, the contact. He's faster than Hamlin. He's ran Hamlin down. Let's see if he can run him down again. He jumped on the outside of Denny. It's really strange how he's caught him so fast. So we're on the back stretch live again, but one lap ago, look at this, how Denny Hamlin moves down, anticipating the run. You can see him looking in the mirror. He's looking up at his helmet. He sees the run coming. He says, oh, I know you're going to come next to me, but you're going to be on the outside. I am not giving you the bottom. Almost IndyCar-esque. That's how they race in the Indy 500, Rick. Just block the bottom of the racetrack at all costs. I couldn't believe he even got that big of a run on Denny to get to his outside. How about the nerve to try the outside? <laughs> That's what I was surprised at. <laughs> It's three car lengths now. Let's see if Kevin Harvick can close the gap up again. Hey, and look, looking fourth, Cole Custer, the rookie. Check that out. Current running order, you see Hamlin Harvick. Four wins, three wins, and behind him the next four drivers, no wins. Eric's done a great job working his way back into this race. After some issues early, had to come down pit road. Look at this contact on this restart. Uh, maybe not much, too much contact, but what's amazing is as much as Harvick got hung up on that restart, how quickly he got back to second. Yeah. I thought he was done. I wonder if Denny is just running just hard enough, trying to keep the turn in the car, not burn the right front up, running so hard. He knows what it's like to be stuck behind that four car. He ran so many laps behind him. Maybe he understands really how difficult it is for, for the four of Harvick to get that run and make the pass, Marty. And remember, all day long, Kevin Harvick has had a very good short run car. And Junior, you mentioned it. That's how they won this race last year. Got the track position, held everybody off. Well, Denny Hamlin has flipped the script on that. Now he's out front trying to hold off Kevin Harvick. Hamlin has had the edge on a longer run, 18 to go. Another thing, too, is we I believe that Harvick and his team really trim his car out. And that's why maybe he was able in the early part of this restart with the newer tires, be able to get such a huge run on Denny down the straightaway is because he's more trimmed out, able to get, look at him drive up to the back of this left car. Now, that's not gonna last very long because he's not gonna have that grip in the corners that he needs being trimmed out. But we'll see how it works out. Junior explained trimmed out. The, tr the car is trimmed out as far as the downforce is peeled away. You can see the 11 aren't driving away from him through turn one, through turn two. But down the straightaways, he really gets huge runs because it's peeled the downforce away and trimmed the car out to run maximum speed on the straightaways. So on new tires is his best shot to get that lead back. As we go longer into this run, the grip goes away from that four car. The garage area talks about looking at pitchers 
looking at videos of that four car, how they're able to run that car trimmed out where most drivers can't do it. They can't drive the car. They can't make enough grip. Garage yep. Jerry talks about that, how Kevin, how good Kevin Harvick and Rodney Childress are at trimming that thing out and making it so even with that, that Kevin Harvick can drive it. Let's Harvick just came on the radio, said the car is too tight, guys, so explain that, Steve. Well, basically, too tight. The front tires aren't working like he wants. He can't carry the speed because the front tires will leave the white line. Let's listen in to what the leader has to say that Levin and Denny Hamlin. It's all straightaway speed, man. That will die. Once it does, take care of your right front. All right, that's exactly what Jeff was talking about. So trimmed out, or Dale Jr. Less downforce means more straightaway speed, harder to drive through the corner. It's kind of as simple as that. That's Chris Gabehart telling Denny Hamlin, everything you see in your mirror is the speed down the straightaway. As the tires age, that should hopefully go away as he struggles through the corner. With 15 laps to go, though, Kevin Hark is doing a really nice job staying close, guys. What sure about is. Matt Kenseth? Yeah, he's staying close as well. Almirola just passed Custer. Best Stuart Haas racing. Three cars in the top five. Eric Almirola coming on. I mean, Matt Kenseth isn't going to come out of retirement, Rick. Drive the 42 car, win the Brickyard 400, is he? He possibly could. He's looking good right now. Matt Kenseth's best finish at this racetrack is second. He's done it three times. Denny Hamlin has won some of the biggest races. As a matter of fact, he's trying right now to duplicate what only three others have ever done in the history of running at Daytona as well as running at the Brickyard, and that's win them in the same season. Denny Hamlin. Probably one of the best drivers. You throw him into the same category as Mark Martin as far as best drivers who haven't won a championship. He's never won this race. So in, a, in the latter part of his career, he's checking all the boxes. Can he check this box today? Think about the experience in this shot right here. Denny Hamlin, Kevin Harvick, Matt Kenseth. Think of the number of race wins. The experiences they've had. Yeah, about 131. 131 wins. I'll try to do the math. How'd I do, Rick? <laughs> I added three numbers together. That's it. So, right there, lap traffic. That is what Harvick is hoping they see more of. That is the only thing I believe that can help him get around this 11 car of Denny Hamlin is beginning to catch lap traffic in a bad place in the middle of the corner. That's also the same thing that Matt Kenseth is hoping. Not a lot of lap traffic, but if, if the four and the, and the 42 can keep it close as we get laid into this race in the next in the last handful, handful of laps, there will be lap traffic to play out, Marty. And Junior, I agree with Burton. Consistently for the last five laps, Matt Kenseth has been the fastest car on the racetrack. Remember, took those four fresh tires that are going to be about 12 laps fresher than what Denny Hamlin has and 11 laps fresher than what Kevin Harvick has. It's been a frustrating return for Matt Kenseth. Finished top 10 in his first race at Darlington, but since then, they just have not been able to put together finishes. But at what he says is one of his best racetracks. Matt Kenseth having his best run back in the Cup Series. Well, remember what Kurt Busch said earlier. He said, well, Chip Ganassi won the IndyCar race right. yesterday. I'd like to help him get the sweep. Well, maybe it's going to be Matt Kenseth that helps him get the sweep. Another thing about the Brickyard to keep in mind, nine times the winner of the Brickyard 400 has gone on to win the championship. I'd argue these are our two championship favorites at the moment, right? What kind of momentum can this race carry? We don't know with 12 laps to go. But guys, as we look deeper through the field, we have Custer running fifth, a great run for the rookie. Christopher Bell not allowing him to get anywhere away from him. He's running six, two rookies in the top six at the Brickyard. Spectacular, great runs. How about Micah McDowell in 11th? I mean, this team is outperforming time and time and time again. And Bubba Wallace in 12th, it's a really mixed up field. I think that's that lack of practice. I still believe it. This lack of practice on the weekends, I feel, gives the smaller teams a chance. I think Dale Jr., if you give these big teams an hour of practice, they're going to get better. I think the smaller teams have a better chance without practice. Absolutely. Back in 19th, Ross Chastain, the last car on the lead lap in the number 77, having a great day for that organization as well in the top 20. You know, Bubba Wallace, you mentioned his name. He's running 12th right now. He got the free pass back on lap 135, and now he's running up inside the top 15. Doing a wonderful job in that car. 
right along with him. Worldwide technology giving us this camera angle. Has enough time to lift the visor up as he goes down the front stretch. Our thermometer switched to Celsius and now it switched to bad. It just won't read anymore. It's gotten dark enough where he's got that visor up because if you look at it, it's a shield. The shield is dark. He puts that visor down and may not be able to see through it. The thing about it is, is uh, you know, I learned this at Homestead. Typically, in a race that starts in the afternoon but ends this late, you might do a tear off, but the drivers are responsible for their helmets, their visors, all those things. Oh, yeah. I can't do the tear off. <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't know how to put it on. I don't know how to, I don't know how to set it up and all that good stuff. Never was dirt, dirt, dirt racer, so make fun of me all you want. Marty. Hey, Junior, a moment ago, Jeff was talking about Denny Hamlin checking off boxes. You guys mentioned trying to win the Daytona 500 and the Brickyard 400 in the same year. Well, this is one of the two crown jewels that Denny Hamlin has not won. If he can check it today, that would only leave the Coca-Cola 600 for him to win. When I talked to him earlier this week, he said, I am absolutely sick of going to Indianapolis, running in the top five, and not winning that race. Well, he's nine laps away from checking another crown jewel box and leaving only one more to check. And you see a couple of those shots. I'm looking for lap traffic. That's all Denny is worried about. He'd love to just run this race with nothing but clean air. So look way out in front of him. Not much lap traffic. There's a handful of cars right there. If Harvick can keep it close, that's his only opportunity to win this race is if they get into lap traffic and somehow Denny gets, you know, stumbled up there. And Denny must have a big smile when he saw that straightaway that you and I oh, saw yeah. on the camera, right? Nobody out there, at least a straightaway up in front. There's still eight laps to go, though. There's your lap traffic right there. And I expect Timmy Hill to lay over and not be much of a challenge in, in getting these guys away and impede their way, but you just never know how you're going to catch them in the corners. And again, let's not count out that 42 of Matt Kenseth. At 48 years old, if Matt Kenseth would win this race, he would be the oldest to win ever at Indy. Al Unser won at 47 years, 360 days. That's the oldest winner ever. Kenseth would be older. As we look back off of Kevin Harvick's bush light on board camera. And Rick, let's remember, you know, we saw a restart and the craziness, but the control of this race changed on that green flag. Oh, 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 hard into the wall. Denny Hamlin from the lead slams into the wall. Again, we see a right side, right front failure, and Hamlin hard into the wall. Catch your breath. Get your breath, but they're, they're with you now. We mentioned it with Eric Jones slammed into the wall, one of the hardest hits. And then we see it duplicated by Denny Hamlin there. Great to see him climb out of the car. Not only the, the physical pain of hitting the wall like that, but the emotional pain knowing so close to winning the Brickyard 400. He said 2017, it was biggest heartbreak of his career to lose that race. He came so close to winning it that day. He's got to be feeling that same heartbreak. Chris Gapehart, the crew chief. Let's take another look. Off into turn one and the right front goes. Mm -hmm. Some big impact impacts today. That's such a big hit. It's so Surprising to me too because we, we've just been talking about it for the last several laps about the clean air that he's enjoyed and One I've, thing you wonder junior is you know with the cooler temperatures, right? It's gotten the more speed. Yeah, it's just gotten It's probably faster than it was 
clean air, just carrying so much speed, you just wonder if that, you know, and that extra, extra pressure on the tires. And you, you have to acknowledge that his teammate, Jones, had an issue. Yep. The 18, Kyle Busch talked about having a vibration just before Jones had his accident. I really wish we could show you what this racetrack surface looks like and how those grooves are cut into it. They kind of run parallel with the race car. Very sharp. Yeah, 26 laps on that right front tire. You have to ask yourself as you look through the rest of the field, what does everybody else do now? With only five laps to go, you would definitely want to stay out. We're hearing a lot of buzz about some other possible vibrations in the top five or ten. And as a driver, you come by and you see this, or as a crew chief, you see this, and now you have to perhaps change your opinion or your mind on how you're going to manage this race. Chris Gabehart, Purdue grad, just up the road. I knew it meant the world to him to try to come here and try to win this race. Let's hear what Kevin Harvick running in the second position had to say about the accident. Ouch. I hope he's all right. Now, Timmy? Yeah, he's out. He looks fine. Yeah, he's good. The respect. Yeah. He wanted to beat him, but he didn't want to see that. And, and listen, the view, when, when somebody blows a right front tire in front of you, it looks, it is so massively destructive and violent what it looks like. It, 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 it scares you for that driver. You know what it feels like. You've been through it. You yeah. see it from that angle, and it's, it is violent. Yeah, there's, it could easily be you. See that respect? Yeah, total respect there between those two teams. They were battling it out for the win, and you saw the crew there, uh, the fist bumps and kind of the pat on the back there for Chris Gabehart. And, and that's what you want. You want the two best guys battling it out for the win, and that's what these teams were seeing right there. So now think about this situation. So if Kevin Harvick, this is what's unique about race car drivers. He just saw that violent impact. He knows other people have blown tires. He knows what could happen, but he's got to go back to work, right? He's got to yep. put that behind him and start thinking about, okay, how do I make this restart work? Matt Kenseth, he's doing the same thing. Eric Amarola is doing the same thing. They're all, they saw it, but they put it behind them. They're like, that's not going to happen to me. I'm going to go win this race. And they immediately switch gears. And it's, it's, it what's make, that's what makes race car drivers different than the average person is they can watch that, they can experience it, and then put it out, go somewhere else with your brain, and just focus on winning this race. Well, Jeff, we're going to restart probably with two or three laps to go. So, you know, the question now, Kevin Harvick has a lot of experience on the front row. If he chooses to, I assume he's going to choose to stay out, pits are open. Let's see who comes before we start talking about how they're going to restart. Let's confirm we know how they're going to restart. I assume the leader will stay on the racetrack. Is this? Is he faking this? Is Matt Kenseth coming? Is the field going to come? Yeah, oh. Matt Kenseth moved back out. I, Chris Rebell, I'm hearing, has a vibration. We just saw another Toyota go into the wall. Chris Rebell says, nope, not today. He comes to pit road, Chase Elliott. Remember, we get a green-white checkers. We don't know how long this race is going to be. Kelly. Yeah, just as you said, Christopher Bell reiterating to his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, a couple of times that he had a bad vibration. So obviously what they just saw happen to their Toyota teammate, they have decided to bring him in with just a couple laps to go to get four tires, Marty. Yeah, Alan Gustafson coming in here for some fresh tires as well, trying to differentiate himself. This was a car that was in the top three for much of the day for Chase Elliott. Not going to be the finish that they want, though. So as I was saying before pit road opened, Jeff, you know, Kevin Harvick has had a lot of experience today restarting on the front row. Matt Kenseth, the 10 of Almirola, the 41 of Custer, not so much, but we have seen that three wide down the backstretch a couple times. What does Harvick need to do? Well, Harvick, he's just got to get a great launch. We've seen if he starts from the outside and can clear Matt Kenseth, that's going to be his biggest advantage. If he can clear him and, and just use that outside line. He's got a teammate, Eric Almirola, that's going to restart third. That might... Well, it's actually, he's got a teammate in fourth as well. But listen, I want to put my, I want to go to Matt Kenseth, right? So Matt Kenseth, he's been sitting on the sidelines. He has not been in the heat of the battle for as many times recently as Kevin Harvick has. Well, Jeff, what, he what's retired. Going, what's going? That's right. He, he retired a he year was ago. Out of the car. Yeah. And so he's only run 12 races since then. And this is really the first time that he has to go win a race. So. He's got to revert back to all of that experience he's had in the past. He's got to go back and pull that out. He doesn't have recent experience to lean on. He's got to go 
lean on that stuff that won him races and won championships in the past. Yeah, I think it's going to come down to that row two, the best pusher. We we're on old tires, getting a good launch. Do you trust the experience, the veteran, with Eric Amarola, or do you go in the outside line, which has been the traditional line that the leader has chosen with the rookie of Cole Custer, and hope that he can do the job and get you out in front into turn one? And, and such an amazing story for Kenza to actually be back in the car. The reason he's there, uh, Kyle Larson started the first four races in this car when the pandemic hit. Uh, the drivers moved over and did eye racing, and it just so happened that uh, a racial slur was said by Kyle Larson. Uh, during one of those events, he was removed from the car, and Matt Kenseth was put into this 42, and that's why Matt Kenseth came out of retirement. It wasn't because he said, I'm going to go racing again. It was because he was called to do this job. And now he is fulfilling this job and potentially could complete the crown jewels. This is the only one Matt Kenseth doesn't have. And, and you know, really interesting, it was a, con a long conversation over several days that Matt and his wife Katie had. He, Matt didn't make this decision by himself. He leaned on Katie. He said, what, what, what do you think? You know, they talked about it, they discussed it, and they made the decision it was the right thing to do. And Matt was excited about it. Katie was excited about it. And now here he is. Indy, Rickyard 400. Chance to win this race. Front row on the restart. It looks like it's going to be overtime. Presented by Credit One Bank. The scheduled distance was 160 laps. They're not going to be able to do that before everything is cleaned up. Let's listen in to Eric Almarola's radio. I feel like we're sitting in a pretty good spot here. You got a good restart. You might have yourself a trophy. Yeah, 10 more. <laughs> so that's the, that's the tough part. I mean, he's got a teammate on the front row. He may be in a position where he's, you know, expected to give him some help on a restart. But when do you stop? When, do, when, when is enough help enough for you to go out on your own and do your own thing? So I think it's been proven that it's his role to get him into turn one. Because I don't see a move three wide into one working for anybody. But when you come off turn two, if you have a run, listen, Eric Amarola has his own race team, his own sponsors, his own family, his own career. If I was his crew chief and he didn't take a run down the back stretch, we would have to have a sit down on Monday and ask what the what all this work is we're doing to try to win the Brickyard 400. It is going to be overtime, so I want to remind you of the overtime rules. They will take the green flag. The next flag will be the white flag. If they don't get back to the white flag, if the leader doesn't cross the start-finish line when the white flag is displayed, a caution comes out before that, they'll restart and go again. They'll do that until the white flag is taken by the race leader. Once they do that, the next flag that comes out will end the race. All right, now we see he's taking that outside line. Man, that puts the pressure on Cole Custer. I don't know if he realizes it or not, but Harvick's going to depend on him to get him down into turn one. So that's, that. you know, and if he doesn't do a good enough job, I'm sure they'll talk about it this week. And Eric Amarola sitting there on the inside lane. The one thing we've learned is it may be good for him to get a big push into one, but then back up a little bit on that short shoot to try and hope that the 42 and the four are side by side, and then he can sling by both of them down the back straightaway. We've oh. seen that work for Hamlin, and we've seen it work for, for Harvick. And if I know anything about the driver of the two, Almirola better have one eye in the mirror, because I don't believe Brad Keselowski is going to hang out in line heading down the back stretch. Guys, what a race it's been already, and it potentially could end up being for Stuart Haas Racing. I mean, remember Tony Stewart, uh, team owner here, three cars in the top four, Marty. And Kevin Harvick has coached Cole Custer, who has leaned on Kevin Harvick over the years for information. He said, I want him to hit me in the bumper. When he hits me in the bumper, that's when we're going to go. Keep in mind, Kevin Harvick is on the oldest tires. He has 10 lap older tires. Ooh. Oh, just to add to the <laughs> drama. Glad you're not as That's not the pep talk you're giving him. <laughs> The best set of the new tires back there in 13th, Chase Elliott. He's the first car with four tires. I'm looking for that left hand of Kevin Harvick. off real good. Switch off. Out the window. Will he wave the 41 up? All right. It's overtime. Presented by Credit One Bank. Kevin Harvick. Matt Kenson. Side by side. Getting ready for the maybe final restart. See the push from behind of Kenseth. 
Austin Dillon also in there giving the shove to that outside line. Can he clear him? He does before they get to one. All right, I'd say Custer did a great job there helping his teammate get out front. That speedy drive is on the racetrack. It was blowing up that we saw the four go through. Now it's Kenseth running second, trying to get a draft. Battle for third, teammates. Eric Almarola and Cole Custer. Harvick has been shot out of a cannon. What a restart and a mess back here for everyone else. Through the short shoot and into four. Again, if they get the white flag, the next flag will end the race. A little contact there between the two and 41 and Cole Custer and Keselowski as Kesey takes fourth place. Custer trying to hang on to a top five here. White one flag more, is white out. Flag. One more time around. Kevin Harvick. A huge lead over Matt Kenza. Down the back stretch for the final time. Harvick, Denny Hamlin, they've been the dominant two cars all of 2020. Hamlin crashes out as they were battling for the lead. Now Harvick trying to go back to back at the most fam famous racetrack in the world. Coming out of turn four, Kevin Harvick is going to see the checkered flag. He wins again at the Brickyard. It's Brickyard 400. Big red behind him. A couple cars in the grass here. Austin Benedetto Dillon. and Austin Dillon. And remember, Dillon was right up there. He was up front helping push Harvick at that restart. They were running 14th and 15th, those two cars. As a celebration for the Bush Light team, that four team will begin. Old guys rule, two oldest guys in the field, finish first, second. <laughs> I say that because I'm old. By the way, that's the 53rd career win for Kevin Harvick. He's now just one win away from tying Lee Petty for 11th all-time in wins. What a season Kevin Harvick is having. This checkered flag moment brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. Let's take a look at this wreck and see what happened with Austin Dillon. A couple of these other guys involved. Oh, Matthew wow. tries to get down in the inside. That was Austin and they both end up in the fence. Oh. Another aggressive move there. Watch here. Austin just doesn't give him the room, and Matt kind of dove, bombed in there. And that 34 that came through Michael McDowell ended up in seventh. So that position they were racing for was going to be well inside the top 10. Yeah. How about McDowell in seventh? Reddick and small team continue. Reddick finished in eighth. Bubba Wallace in ninth. Great runs for those teams. Great run for this guy. Yeah, Matt Kenseth in that 42. Not really had anything to smile about since he's come back, but this is going to definitely put a smile on his face. We get to talk to him. Can't wait to hear what he says. That first race back at Darlington, it was he was really good. And then it just from there, it kind of went downhill, but solid day today. Marty. Kevin Harvick is now a three-time Brickyard 400 winner. His hero, Rick Mears, won here four times in the Indianapolis 500. He's approaching that record, but what a performance from this team. And since we have come back from the break, that is now four wins for Rodney Childers. Kevin Harvick and the Stuart Haas Racing Team gets the helmet off. And Kevin, boy, I tell you, what a battle with Denny Hamlin. Had he not had his issue, did you think he'd maybe catch him? Well, we knew he had some, he was going to be really close on tires. And um, Rodney told me on the radio, he said, just make sure you keep the pressure on him. And that was all the pressure I could give. So, uh, you know, those guys do a really good job. Just got to thank everybody on my Bushlight Ford Mustang, everybody from Mobile One, uh, Haas Automation, uh, Hum Brothers Pizza, Jimmy John's, everybody who uh, is a part of this program and just keeps bringing good race cars to the racetrack.
from the beginning, this was a battle of track position. How tough was that battle to try and stay out front? You made one daring move, Kevin, where you went almost to the grass to go get the lead. Yeah, I didn't have any more. I didn't have any more room. <laughs> that was for sure. Uh, but it's a brickyard, man. This is this is uh, what I grew up wanting to do as a kid. Went at the brickyard, and to be able to come here and and uh, you know have won for the third time is is something that I, I could have never dreamed of. I want to say hi to my family at home. Uh, I know Keelan will be jacked up. Uh, Piper's probably asleep. If not, hello. Um, but just uh, really, really proud of all these guys on this team. He joins Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch as the only driver to win back-to-back -back Brickyard 400s. Kevin Harvick wins it for a third time. Kelly. Well, Marty, really good to see Denny Hamlin outside of the infield care center after a really hard hit. But I don't know what hurts more, the impact with the wall or losing one of the crown jewels, especially that way. What are you thinking, Denny? Yeah, it's just uh, it's tough. I, I hate it for the FedEx team. and. Just, uh, yeah, we did do what we needed to do. It just uh, didn't work out for us today and um, had a fast car, obviously, and was, was stretching out there, but uh, wasn't pushing uh, right front at all. Just, you know, it's kind of roulette. You know, you've, whether you get one that's going to stay together or not, and mine didn't, and you saw the end result. So that, that stinks, but probably the whole uh, FedEx, you know, Toyota team, we've just uh, been so good here lately, and I hate that, you know, I feel like I'm – doing all I can I just you know these these big races and just a lot of things like this just don't don't go my way all the time and uh, you know but we're still gonna go next week and try to win the next one so we'll do all we can we have really enjoyed um, Denny the battles between you and Kevin Harvick over these last several weeks you both have been so successful since the return what has it been like for you kind of having this this rivalry and these great battles on track well it's been a great battle and, and I mean you know those guys are great competitors and you know, the last few weeks it's been, uh, you know, kind of a head-to-head -head with the, with me and him. So, you know, I, there's probably not another guy I'd rather uh, battle with each and every week. So uh, congrats to their, them and their team. They did a great job. Obviously, we had two very, very close and equal cars, uh, but uh, they got it today. Denny. Yep. Rick. Thanks, Kelly. You heard the respect there. And obviously, we heard the respect from Kevin when he went by Denny Hamlin. He, Right away was ouch, and is he okay? Did he get out of the car? Well, sure enough, Kevin Harvick now a three-time Brickyard 400 winner. And he celebrates that big win here at the Brickyard.